All right. So there will probably be a little bit of a lag, but if you are watching the playback, hello. We are here to recommend hello. lots of books. Okay. Yes. Um, Yay. All right. Just really quickly, I would like to acknowledge that I am recording this on the traditional lands of the Wandery people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who might be watching this. Hello and welcome to everyone. Hi. It's very nice to have you all here. Yes. Familiar faces, I see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Morgan, for letting us know that we are live. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> so I suppose I should probably explain this concept a little bit for people who may not be familiar with it. Hey, Heather. Uh, if you follow my channel, I've been doing this ABCs or A to Z of romance where I basically give a book recommendation, like rapid fire book recommendation for every letter of the alphabet. And because I am... Um, I've gotten to the point now where I can't start a book title with the letter of the alphabet. I now just count any letter on the front cover of the book as valid for this. So, so what I you're saying is you're cheating. <laughs> oh, I totally cheated when yeah, I, I when cheated. I could find the letter 15 minutes before the live. I tried not Some to cheat. These were. But yeah, I there are certain letters that were just never going to happen for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look. I'm just looking at one of them now going, I thought I put that somewhere else and I clearly did not. <laughs> so it's in a really weird spot, but it still counts. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a super quick um, sort of one sentence pitch for a book, essentially. I will bring up Goodreads uh, once we get started because we were talking about this when we were plotting it, <laughs> that we would probably need to have Goodreads open to go want to read this book um, but I'll do it so that everyone can see the covers look I did say there's two levels to this you can you can be very strict and have it as the first first letter of um, the title or the author or you can just be relaxed and chilled out which is where I currently am um, well you've done this so many times so yeah, I, yeah. I tried and then I gave up how that went yeah um, and I should say like I've seen lots of videos similar to this um, on BookTube. Uh, my favourite ones to watch though are Kathy Trithart's one. She does the A to Z of Queer Lit. So if you haven't seen those, she's got like, uh, she's probably up to something like 11 or 12 now of um, queer book recommendations by the alphabet oh. and they're amazing. So if you like this style of video, there's um, those ones as well. But anyway... Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, the other thing that we were going to mention is in the description, we should there should be the link to the HarperCollins Union link. So I I tried to avoid HarperCollins titles. I may have missed one. So if I have, um, the link is down there. So if you need to go and sign the petition or anything like that, you can. Yeah, I'm terrible um, about paying attention to publishers. So there might yeah. be some on my list. I, I have a couple of Avon. So I, I tried to go yeah. um, around that by making most of mine manga or uh, graphic novels. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of mine are uh, into your self pub. So, um, but yeah, the link is down there. So if you haven't already gone to check out all the information, you absolutely can. Uh, oh, yes, lots of screenshots. I, I'm, to be honest, I'm going to be coming back afterwards. Although I did say if you guys send me through your list later, I'll actually put them into a list and either create like a Google Doc or um, drop them into the into the description. I don't know if um, YouTube will crack it at me for how many books there are, but we'll see. <laughs> um, I, I, we have You guys haven't introduced yourself. You've been here heaps of times, but would you like to introduce <laughs> yourselves before we get started? Uh, sure. Hi, I'm Megan or Meowth Vader. Uh, I read a little bit of all forms of books, i.e. audio, uh, chapter, manga, graphic novel, and I talk about posting videos all the time, and I have posted zero in the last, like, <laughs> four months. <laughs> but this count, well, it's not on your channel, but you're here, so you're making video content. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why us. I did a live on my channel for my birthday so that I had a video in October. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Megan, you will see her on lives a lot on our channels. So. <laughs> she's she's going to be back on my channel in two weeks' time. 
weeks. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> two weeks? Yes, I need to remember to read on. that book. Both books. <laughs> well, one hasn't come out yet. So. Yeah. I should probably read the other one, though. <laughs> yes. All right. So I am Bree, and my channel is In Love and Words. And um, I also read all sorts of formats, but I tend to stick to audiobooks, mostly read romance. Contemporary romance is my favorite. I love monster romances too. And I do read a handful of nonfiction books as well. Sorry, I live right by a fire station and of course a fire truck went past. <laughs> I'm Robin from Paperbacks and Planners. I read mostly eBooks and audiobooks. Um, I don't like holding books anymore. I read mostly, almost exclusively romance, and I'll read pretty much any any subgenre of it. If it has a romance in it, I will read it. It's pretty <laughs> much the rule. Yay. Um, I'm Steph here on my channel. I read whatever I feel like it at the time and in whatever the format things. happens to be available. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> there you go, Megan. You, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so I am going to bring up Goodreads. So, and I better move my mouse somewhere where I can find it on the other. This is the problem, guys. I'm attempting to be tech savvy, which I pretend to be, and then it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> all right. Would you like me to start, or would you like to start, Megan? And we'll go down. Maybe we go in order. Go yeah. yeah, go in order. Go in yeah. order, so you'll start, and then we'll just go down the. Down this road. Yeah. Okay. So uh so we're starting off with A. So I had American Queen by Sierra Simone, which was the second Sierra Simone book that I read. It's the first book in the new Camelot series. And it is an MMF MMF romance between the president, the vice president, and a woman that the president met when she was in her mid-teens uh, in the past. So it's an age gap in the present day. There's a lot of dominance and submission stuff, and it's a very loose Camelot retelling. Um, and for those who are wondering, it is a Swords Crossing book, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's steamy AF. It is so good. It has some of the best scenes it in is. it. Mm -hmm. Clearly, and I can't um, Yeah. Yeah, I can't um, talk and type at the same time. That, that <laughs> <laughs> I've had this one on my computer forever. And it it is so oh my gosh, good. I read it. I love it. You need to read it. We're going to all peer pressure you to read it. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the second book, I think, will... The second book gets people, but if you can push through the, to the end of the second book, the third book is very, very interesting. I've it only read the first one, but the first yeah. one was very good. The first one is fantastic. <laughs> It's really good, yeah. Oh, All Gretchen right. hasn't read it. I can't believe Gretchen, you haven't read it. You need to read it too, especially if you like Sarah Simone. Yeah. This is like I've read Sarah Simone. Simone. It's just getting picked up. Mm. Yeah. All right, Megan. Uh, okay. I have The Gamble by Kristen Ashley. I mostly just wanted to have a Kristen Ashley book, and I figured that A is the best place to start. <laughs> um, so The Gamble is uh, this woman goes on vacation from England to Colorado. She's in the mountains uh, in the middle of like a blizzard. And she gets basically an Airbnb not realizing that the owner of the Airbnb is also living at the house. And it's great. And there's, um, what is that like? Uh, when you care, caretaking, cause she gets sick and mm -hmm. he takes care of her. And it's it's great. It's like one of my favorite Kristen Ashley's. <laughs> I love that Morgan had to explain sword crossing to her mom. <laughs> well, um, these days with why, yeah, with why choose and um, and even MMF, like you have yeah. to specify now because right. people well, are if picky. It's MFM, there's no sword yeah. crossing. But if it's MMF, then there is swords crossing. Yeah. Is typically mm -hmm. how like it's supposed to go, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you like yeah. chonky books, Kristen Ashley writes some real chonker books. She does. Yes, she does. <laughs> All right. So I chose A Proposal They Can't Refuse by Natalie Kanya. I think that's how you say her last name. This was on my favorites list of 2022. I discovered it just kind of randomly on a whim. I think it was like a cover borrow from Libby. So freaking good. So I kind of... I didn't write like a sentence. I kind of did like bullet points 
for each of the books. So this is a contemporary foodie romance. We have a scorned heroine by the hero. So it's enemies to lovers because of that. He's her brother's best friend. There's a fake engagement in it. There's forced proximity. They end up having becoming roommates, like moving in together because of their fake dating situation. The hero's family owns a whiskey distillery. And then the heroine's family owns a Puerto Rican restaurant. And um, the representation is we have a Puerto Rican heroine and the author is Latina. I'm not sure if the author is Puerto Rican as well, but this book is so good. It has so many great tropes and they're done really well and it's super swoony and we have some pining in it too. I just, I love it so much. Like as cute as that cover is, that's how cute the book is. There's, a, there's grief in it too, trigger warnings for grief as well yeah. and gentrification. Sounds I feel really like good. you <laughs> mentioned it like recently because I, after you said something, I like checked it out for my library. So it's sitting in my library in my oh, good. E library right now. Yeah, <laughs> it was in my 2022 favorites video. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that cover. It's so cute. Yeah, it's so like cute. The colors, the like, I like how they're like leaning into each other and oh, it's so great. Mm -hmm. I love. All right. This is my turn. Mm -hmm. I yeah. chose mm -hmm. Ache by Marley Valentine, which is a Why Awakening MM romance. And it is two best friends who go to Vegas together and one of them is engaged. So it's a cheating romance, but it's them falling in love after being friends for their entire lives. That's very good. It made me cry. I love it. <laughs> um, I love that name, that title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the cover, the cover, fun fact about the cover is that that cover is actually an actual MM couple and he is on Bookstagram. His account is Books Over Bros. And that is him and his husband. Oh, right and he reached out to him and asked if she could use that photo of them. And that is because that's oh. a photo that hangs in his house. And so she saw uh -huh. it in the background and asked if she could use it. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Oh, okay, I, I like love. that. That's a great story. Yeah. I know. I follow That's him. Such a good story. I want to read his yeah. book. I forget what it's called, but he has a book too. You and I rewritten. I have not read it yet, but uh, oh yes, we should buddy read it. Yes. <laughs> Count me in. Okay. This mm -hmm. sounds good. Added to All good right. <laughs> Yay. Um, that little okay. story is why I read it. <laughs> the little photo story. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. So for B, I had Broken Vow by Sophie Lark, which is the fifth book in the Brutal Birthright series and is my favourite one. And no one can convince me otherwise, um, probably because <laughs> it's a bodyguard romance. Um, so the heroine is a mafia lawyer who is being targeted by a hitman. And so she needs to basically go into hiding with this ex-military slash rancher. Um, and it's great. Mm -hmm. I've never read any Sophie Lark books. I think I'm like the only person who just has like never read one of the Sophie Lark books. I haven't yet. I had this, this is the series. The series to start with. Yeah, like all the all the books are good. Two and five were my fave. Like they were my two, two favorites my favorite. in the series. Yeah, yeah. Two is a Beauty and I've the got, Beast. Well, well, see, I've got two. I've got the illustrated um, version of two, the hard copy, mm -hmm. but this one's still being done. So I'm I'm just mm -hmm. waiting very impatiently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Megan. Uh, I have Burn For Me by Alana Andrews because Mad Rogan is my favorite, favorite hero. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot tell it. <laughs> so um, if you don't know, it's the first book in the Hidden Legacy series. It's about Nevada and Mad Rogan and uh, they're, their meet cute is um, he kidnaps her from a museum, I think, or like an arbory because he thinks that she's a bad guy and then interrogates her in his basement. <laughs> I love that. This is a very good morality chain. It is. It's a very good morality <laughs> chain. Also, it takes place in um, other world Houston, which is really fun for people who live in Texas because they talk about like actual places in Houston and then like also highways in Texas. So it's, it's really nice to hear them just be like, 35 sucks. And I'm like, 35 does suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say, this is a really good one. If you need something that you just 
want to re really want to push you to read uh, as close to one sitting as you can because this one, once you start reading it, you just Feel good. You, you're compelled to keep reading. Um, <laughs> I love books like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So my B is Butterfly Swords by Jean Jeannie Lin. I think that's how you say her name. Um, I'm not a historical romance person. However, I loved this book so much. It feels more like a fantasy romance to me. It takes place during the Tang Dynasty. Um, the heroine pretends is pretending to be a guy and the hero. I can't remember. Steph, you read this. One of them saves mm -hmm. the other one. I think the hero saves the heroine or the other way around. But he ends up traveling with her. Um, yeah. so it's kind of like bodyguard romance ish and they go on like this adventure, their secret identity in it. The heroine's a princess in disguise. It's a forbidden romance because there, she was, I think she like ran away from her wedding and that's why she's yeah. in disguise. And then she meets him. And so it's forbidden. And then of course the, the heroine is Chinese and then the author is Asian. I'm not sure if she's Chinese as well. I love it so much. So it's a historical romance for people who don't like historical romances, but like fantasy. Yeah, this has been on my radar for like at least a year and I just haven't picked it up yet. Mm -hmm. It's good fun. I went with Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, which was one of my favorite books of last year. And it is a second chance romance between a divorced couple who went through some pretty intense trauma in their marriage. So trigger warnings for miscarriage and loss of a child and depression. But it is so well done. And Kennedy Ryan's mental health depiction was top tier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So it's very, very good. And you get really in the head of the heroine. So it's it's very beautiful. Their whole journey back to each other. So good. One of the best second chance romances I've read. Yeah. yeah. Writing is on point. And then one of my favorite things about it is the female friendships in it. Like there's yes, a lot of sad so things that happen in this book, but it was a, a situation that happens with the female friends that actually made me cry while I was reading it. <laughs> yeah. They're super supportive. And like the book, while it's sad throughout the whole thing, like it ends on this, like such a hopeful note. And it's just by the time you get to the end, you like your whole heart. It just, it's, yeah. it's beautifully done. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the rest of the books in the series because the what's going on in the background with the secondary characters, I'm like, I don't know what's yes. happening, but I need to know. <laughs> yeah, Kennedy Ryan does such a good job writing like multiple books, like in the same world following different side characters because her side characters are so strong. So it's so easy mm -hmm. to love them before their book even comes out. Mm -hmm. I, I have to like say emotions. this one's the one I'm emotionally prepared for. Yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't like having feelings, so I don't read Kennedy Ryan books because I don't like <laughs> this having cover emotions. Is also, one of my favorite covers of last year is just the color that orange is so beautiful. It is, I love it. It's gorgeous, and I think, and it has um, spot gold foiling, I think, on it too. Yeah, oh, yeah the mixed media mm -hmm. sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Very nice. Yes. All right, so C, I have uh, Coffee Boy by Austin or S.A. Chant, um, who I tend not to shut up about, to be honest, because um, I love their books so much. Um, this is a novella. It is a contemporary romance, contemporary queer romance um, set in an office of a political campaign. So our protagonist is a intern who's just gotten a job there. And he ends up falling for one of the office managers or the project manager, I forget the term, anyway, mm -hmm. um, one of the political campaign staffers. Um, the main character is transgender and the other love interest is bisexual and was married in the past, but, and he's a, a huge grump um, and takes a while to warm up to the main character. And mm -hmm. I really loved it. It's a really great short quick easy read anyone in the u.s it's also on hoopla Just back. oh cool Ooh. um okay so i have uh my first graphic novel i have chef's kiss by Jarrett melendez and um it's about this guy who 
went to school with an English degree. And uh, like the song says, what do you do with a BA in English? Uh, well, mm -hmm. he decides he desperately needs money because bills and he tries to become a like cook in this restaurant. Uh, but they make him go through a bunch of tests in order to like actually get the job. And it's, it's great. So it's cooking. Mm -hmm. There's a pig involved the pig is the food critic it's so cute <laughs> and um it's male male romance and oh. yeah it's it's great it it'll make you laugh and then you'll also be like dang that love interest though because they draw him very very well <laughs> <laughs> yes bonus points for the avenue q reference <laughs> <laughs> So my C is Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. Um, this is a novella and it has one of the best meet cutes of all time um, because the hero is a streamer and the heroine listens to his streams all the time. I think he, he talks about puzzles or something, I can't remember. But she would go to sleep listening to his voice every night, but then all of a sudden he stops streaming and he deletes his archive and she's like, now I can't freaking sleep. And so she's like, okay, I think I'm gonna message him. I'm gonna send him an email. And so she writes him an email. She's like, yeah, so I can't sleep. Can you like just send me some of your archives or something? And then it turns into them like emailing back and forth and then he ends up calling her so she can like listen to his voice on the phone. And it's just so great. She's, she's amazing. I love her because she owns a successful media company and he like designs escape rooms or something like that. So it's just, it's really good. It's a novella, it's short, but, and it's part of the Reluctant Royal series, but you don't need to read the whole series. So, and of course it has, as you can see, we have a black heroine who's a wheelchair user and then an Asian hero, it's written by a black author. So that's the rep, but it's really good. I love that book. I need it's to so read good. that book. I just like, I yeah, never read it because I thought you could read Reluctant Heroine or Reluctant Royals first and I couldn't get into the first one. No, I didn't. I don't like that series, but I liked this book. And this doesn't even feel yeah. like it's part of the series, to be honest. Okay, I'll have to check it out then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah every time you just like explain that me cute, I want to read it every single time because that's so I love that so much. <laughs> well, as someone who loves right. audiobooks, and, like falls in love with with yeah. male voices. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mine shouldn't be a shock to anyone that watches mm -hmm. my channel, but mine's Criminal Intentions by Cole McCabe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm utterly obsessed with this series. The first one is, yeah, the cardigans, which also fits for C. It's just like a whole bunch of alliteration. Mm -hmm. But this <laughs> is a MM romance that's also a suspense. So you're following these two detectives who are both kind of grouchy and they are forced to work together on this first case. One of them has been with the Baltimore Police Department for many years. The other one is a recent transfer from California. And they end up having to work on this case case because it is also surrounding the death of a bunch of queer men in Baltimore. And so they both request to be put on the case. And then it is a very, very slow bird romance between the two of them. It's told very episodic. So every book reads like an episode of a TV show. And it is the two of them slowly unwinding each other and getting to know each other over a lot of books. It has a Korean main character who is has is like the best asexual representation I've ever read. And then mm -hmm. the other hero is um, part Persian and Jewish, and the two of them slowly fall in love. There is so much rep in this book. You have an, a romantic character, you have a Black um, ex-wife, you have a non-binary character. There's just, it's so well done, so fantastic. And I want everyone to read it. Like my it one number one like, is to get people to read this series. <laughs> I have it saved on my screen. <laughs> So good. It's also 29 books long at this point. So <laughs> you're gonna pick it up. But they're they so fast. They're some of yeah. like, they're some of the fastest um, books I've read. Even even the full length novels. Yeah, I read. If you have even the really full length ones are pretty short. Yeah, like if you have scribbed and you want audios, the first three are on audio on scribbed. Yes. And I think the next three are coming out next year, if I remember Yay. correctly. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. Um, this is where I start cheating a little bit. Um, so for <laughs> D, I have um, Headstrong by Eden Finley. 
which is part of the Vino and Veritas series. It's actually book three. I think I keep saying it's book four, but anyway, um, mm -hmm. it's another MM romance. This time it is between a college hockey player who's recently come out and he just wants to get out there and, and start dating. And he is just this precious human being who just says anything that comes into his head. Um, and so people sort of get very taken aback by him and they're like, okay, see you later. Um, mm. And he becomes friends with the bartender at this bar that he goes to. And this guy's never really quite sort of questioned his sexuality, but they become really, really good friends first. And then he realises that maybe he's not as, as straight as he thought he was, but he doesn't really put a label on it because it's really his attraction to um, the other character. But it was just kind of really fun to see how it went from that because he does really start going, okay, well, why am I feeling this way? And I really liked it. And I, I quite like Eden Finley's um, books as well. But, yes, that is my D. Megan? Your dad will do by Katie Robert. <laughs> uh my sister decided to get this for me off my Amazon wish list during Christmas, so I opened it in front of my whole family. It was great. <laughs> I support that. Um, but yeah, this uh, this woman's fiance, uh, she caught him cheating, so she broke off the engagement and then was like, uh, for revenge, I'm going to seduce your father. And that's where it begins, is her knocking on the father's front door. <laughs> Banging is the pot. Such a good book. It is one of my favorite <laughs> Katie Roberts books, honestly. Me too. It's my. I, it might be my favorite Katie Roberts book. <laughs> yeah. Whenever she comes to Texas, uh, she. I'm. I'm gonna ask her to sign this or stamp it or do yeah. something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That started my uh, ex's parent obsession. <laughs> 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 I think I think that one started everyone's sexist parent obsession. I remember her posting about it on Twitter, and she's like, "So I have this idea for a book. I'm not yeah. sure if I should write it." And everyone's like, "Freaking write it!" And then she wrote right. it. Um, yes, yeah. yeah. loved it. So great. Yep. Um, so mine is "Deep" by Sky Warren. This is a standalone romance. It says it's like part of a series, like number a million, um, eight or eight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, you can eight is like a million. Um, yeah, it's number million. That's all right. <laughs> to me, it is. I, I don't like super long series typically. Anyway, so you can read it as a standalone, though. This is a super, super, super dark romance, and it has a lot of tropes that I don't normally like. It's age gap, and it's a pretty decent age gap. Also, the hero meets her, meets the heroine when she's definitely underage, but he ends up kind of rescuing her from sex trafficking ish, like more like she escapes and then he kind of houses her for a little bit. And then they have a couple of like tension filled situations together when she's very much underage, which borders on a little bit too much for me. I don't know why I was okay with it in this book, but then she, they end up like, she ends up leaving and she, they don't talk to each other for a while. She ends up going to college and everything until one day he, shows up at her apartment, like lean, slumped up against her door and like completely injured because he's part of like this like underground, whatever. Um, so then like that, that's when things really start to begin with them. Like nothing actually happens when she's underage, but there's like some tension between them. But if you like a super obsessive, possessive hero, um, this one is the one It's also romantic suspense and um, there's a lot of fair warning, like non-con, dub con, like there's a lot of like questionable things, super, super steamy, but I cannot tell you why I was okay with some of the things in this book, but I was. <laughs> it's one of those. Yeah. I definitely have books like that. Sometimes you yeah. just find a book and go, yeah, no, that's my exception. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I went with um, Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston for this one, which mm -hmm. is a ghost romance that reminded mm -hmm. me a lot of, um, oh, that movie. I wrote it in my review and I don't remember the title of it now. But essentially our heroine goes back to her like childhood home and she has always been able to see ghosts and she ends up seeing the ghost of her editor who was kind of, mad at her because she was late on a book 
and the two of them are falling in love as he is a ghost and they are trying to figure out why she can see him, why he's there, how he became a ghost and like how how she can send him on and it is their romance and it was really cute. It's surprisingly hard hitting. Um, so trigger warning for loss of a parent, but it is, it's beautiful. And the movie is just like heaven. If you've seen yeah, the movie, like, just like that heaven. Mark Ruffalo movie, I think that you had talked yeah. about it on your stories. You're yeah. like, what movie was it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you like that movie, this is a take on that. So it's, it's very well done. I liked it a lot. It was kind of a, a book I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did since it is like a traditionally published romance. Mm -hmm. I had the same hesitations yeah. with this one and ended up really liking it. And yeah. just to anyone who's wondering, there is an HEA at the end. So don't worry about that. Yes, there <laughs> is an HEA. It is a romance. It is not a sad contemporary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, been meaning to read that one. All right. Um, for E, I had, let's see if this comes up. No, it'll bring up every thriller known to man. Uh, the Executioner <laughs> by Jeff. Jessica Gadziella, which is book 10 in the professional series, although you can probably kind of pick it up any way you like. It is romantic suspense. Um, and the hero in this book is a side character who's been in all of the other books, and he's sort of this ex-military billionaire playboy character who has attended, has had a tendency to kidnap his friends and drug them so he can take them on holidays because he thinks they work too hard. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> So, I, I don't know if I agree with his methods, but I like that he just <laughs> takes them on holiday. Um, anyway, it's his book and he sort of moonlights as, uh, so he was probably, I think from memory, ex-Special Forces. And he has been known to be the executioner for this fixer group, which is where the title comes from. But he ends up having to say or he runs into this um to this woman and he thinks it's a coincidence um but they end up sort of on the run and he has to protect her and it's really really good and this was like the one book in the series that i was waiting for because he's just the most out there bizarre kind of character in a book i'm like mm -hmm. i've got to see how this plays out <laughs> i love that i mean there are worse things to do to people after drugging them <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. He literally, he li like they literally wake up normally on his yacht. He's like, <laughs> I mean, we're in this place. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, so I have the, the main event by Shelley Lawrenceton, M A N E, like like a lion's mane, because it's about lion shapeshifters. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the first book in the Pride series. And like, if you if you uh go into Shelley Lawrenceton with hot and badgered and you were like this is buck wild and nuts and I don't know what's going on uh go back to pride because it takes place in that world so it makes a lot more sense if you build it through pride and then go into honey badger chronicles uh because that that's what a lot of people are just yeah a lot of people are like okay this is too much and it's like yeah because it, it pulls a lot from the assumption that you know the characters that it's pulling from and the world and the rules and I didn't realize that until after I read the honey badgers and then I went back and read pride and I was like this makes a lot more sense now <laughs> so um yeah the main event's book one and it's uh the, the whole series is great and I recommend this one before going into honey badger even though that one is her current series because <laughs> you'll get far less confused and you'll probably like the stuff more it, it's a slow build into chaos instead of just like straight jump in <laughs> for everyone who had honey badger like high on their list yes of books start, <laughs> start with the pride series first and then go into honey badger because people all your time i'm like honey badger chronicles they're like it was ridiculous and i didn't like it and i'm like pride and they're like okay <laughs> I, I like this more. And then they go back to Honey Badger and they're like, oh my God, I love it now. And I was like, yes, context. You need the context for that. I have like three for E. <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah, you can only hard. choose one, Brie. I know, I'm picking one. Um, I am going to choose Evil Twin by Katie Wilde. 
Uh, this is a book that I read because of Heather from He Had Book Tubes, and she loved this one, and I freaking fell in love with it. It's a fantasy romance. It's a novella. It's super short. Um, there's deception. You have a super badass heroine, badass hero. They're just great together. And the main thing that I love about this is there is a steamy scene in this that is the best hands down steamy scene I've ever read in my life. And it's so unique and so different. There's, I, I don't want to say too much about it because it is a novella and I don't want to get like, there's a, there's a reveal in it. So I don't really want to give it away, but just go into it. And when you get to the carriage scene, message me. <laughs> I just <laughs> so <downloaded> good. It. <laughs> just downloaded it. <laughs> Message me when you get to the carriage scene. <laughs> um, um, I went with Enemies of the State by Tell Bauer, which is another um, romantic suspense. And this is the first book in a series. And this is a MM romance written by a gay man as well. Just a heads up about that. But it is a romance between the president of the United States and his secret service agent. So it's a forbidden romance. Mm -hmm. And it is all about them trying to figure out who is doing some shady stuff and messing with politics. This was written in what, like 2017, and it predicted a lot of things correctly. Let me tell you, because this takes place, I think it's supposed to be in like 2020. He got a lot of stuff right, and it's kind of terrifying. How much got right? This is so hard on my TBL list. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, I need to read it. Yeah, it, you're before. definitely. This has a great audiobook too. So this is available mm -hmm. on audio, I think, through Hoopla if you're in the U.S. I think it might also be on Scribd. Um, the audiobooks are great, and you're going to want them all, and they're long. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's really good. That it's very well. fantastic. <laughs> all right. Um, so for F, I had Faded Blades by Ilona Andrews, which is book three in the Kinsman universe, but you don't really need to read the other two books to read this because they're all very different. Um, but they're kind of, this one's a sci-fi romance um, and it is about it's sort of a world where enhanced humans exist and the hero and the heroine in this one, uh, they work for sort of rival businesses and so they are it's basically an enemies to allies to lovers sort of story with some corporate espionage mm -hmm. and some really awesome fight sequences um, and it's also not very long mm -hmm. and I love this cover a lot I know I was gonna say I love that cover it's a good cover a lot of um, Andrews always has really good covers I feel like she like, does they do yeah. they do yeah, they it's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my F is Fury by Lauren Donner. Um, it's book one in the New Species series, and um, I got it from Heather, and uh, I instantly read I think like the first five in the series before I was like, okay slow up let's let's take a step back but um it's really good it's um paranormal or urban fantasy I don't know what you would con what you would put it as but basically um this like medical company bred humans with like animal DNA so that they could like produce medicine and then the government found out and was like no don't why would you do that to people and um, <laughs> so they gave these new species people that were created like their own lands in America and they're like their own sovereign nation. And uh, yeah, I liked it. I don't know. <laughs> so it's, it's big, big buff dudes with um, <laughs> character traits of yeah. either, I think with like apes, dogs or cats. And that's weird, but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really selling it, guys. Uh, Heather did a much better job. So you should go watch it. Is, it's an interesting, it. it is an interesting series. I think I've read maybe the first two books in the series. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. So are they shifters or they just have? No, they just have like characteristics. So like um, um, the cat breeds have like, like cat shaped eyes and 
Oh, cool. So, like, dog breeds have, like, really sharp canine teeth and... Interesting. Uh, yeah. So it's and a lot of, like, personality, animal instinct mm -hmm. type. Yeah. Changes. That's very like, unique. you're my mate stuff, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a cool take on shifters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, so mine is For Real by Alexis Hall. Um, Steph and I, buddy, read this one. I think this was my first book by Alexis Hall that was one of his indie published books. So for those of you who maybe read Boyfriend Material and there was like, there's no, that's closed door. This is not closed door. This is super, super, super steamy. It is so good. It is a different take on the dom-sub dom relationship because there is an age gap, but it, and there is like a, the one hero, the older hero is a doctor. And so he's like really well off. And then the younger hero is a little bit of a hot mess because Alexis Hall writes great hot messes. Um, but the dom sub situation is the, the older hero is the sub and the younger hero is the dom. And he is also new to like the dom sub space and everything. So, oh, hi, Heather. Um, so that's also different too, because the older hero has been in, in the scene for a while. Um, but of course, as is typical for Alexis Hall, amazing humor, amazing side characters, like there's just the right amount of emotional elements in it. It's so good and so swoony and so steamy. I love this book. It's my Alexis favorite Alexis Hall. Hall book. Yeah, I think this is my favorite too. Mine for F is Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. This is her indie pubbed um, fantasy romance series. And the quick little pitch that I, cause this, it's a big book and it's a long series, um, but essentially our heroine gets tricked by some gods to do their bidding for them. And they kill her and send her into this alternate world that's a fantasy world. And she wakes up in the body of a princess that just attempted to kill and murder the prince and his entire family. And now she needs to work with that prince and convince him that she is not the princess. All while trying to figure out if she wants to help the gods or if she wants to betray them. That's a little pitch. And it is a romance between her and the prince. It's very good. This gives me a lot of like from Blood and Ash sort of vibes, but if you didn't like the world building in here, there's actual world building in this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't like from blood. I, I mean, I I liked from blood and ash, but I didn't love it. But I really liked this book, and that was the best way I've ever heard anyone describe this book. Because I've tried to describe it, and I cannot. But that is the best way. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely like hard to explain because there's so many layers to the story, and there's a lot of different plot things that are happening simultaneously. Yeah. So it's a little hard to just give up you know, elevator pitch for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> book three comes out this year, so. Mm -hmm. Coming out soon. Nice. Yay. All right. For G, I had Ghost by Evie Mitchell, which is part of her Nameless Souls MC series, which is a sort of dystopian romance because it's uh, in a, a post pandemic type world. So, not the pandemic that happened, but a different one. Um, better specify that um and <laughs> it's actually it's set in australia as well so the all the heroines in this series were a group of women that banded together in a university when everything went to crap and basically they no one else was left there and so they set up their own little community they were all they're all very intelligent and they all had various skills that they were using but it became really apparent that they needed some backup and they basically went to the mc for help and the first book is a little bit hard to get through I think but ghosts by the time we get to ghost they're actually all traveling to from I think it's from Melbourne up to Queensland and in this one ghost and the heroine stumble across some cage there was some cage fighting and they infiltrate that to try and rescue some of the their people that have gone missing uh I think in the second book and it's very very good very very different from maybe Mitchell's other, other stuff so it's a lot darker um but yeah you have very I, I quite like it because you have very intelligent female characters doing all sorts of 
crazy things to save the difference. Um, I have I have Girls Weekend by CM Costa. Yeah. Uh, it is about uh, these three elves who decide to have a girls weekend at a nudist orc colony because they want to get laid and have fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> See it's really good. It is really good. Her blurts are always hilarious. <laughs> this is why I don't make <laughs> content anymore because these are my blurbs. <laughs> in your defense, it is very hard to sum up her books in a way that don't sound <laughs> like, like I promise it's good. <laughs> I promise it's really good. It is. Yes, I, I love that book. It's so great. And the next book is also really good in the series too. It's really long though, compared to this. Yeah, book. I didn't like, this read one's the second like one when I saw hour. how long it was. No, it's worth it. No, it's saw... worth it. It's so good. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's like, no, because this one's like, this is this big, y'all. And then the other one right. is like three times this. Like and I'm like, oh, right oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. So I think for G, I'm going, because I have a couple for this one, but I'm going to go with Gym Bunny by Brianna Hale. This was a book that I read fairly recently. Um, this one is a dom-sub relationship. The whole series, this is the second book in the series. I didn't love the first book. The first book was fine. I didn't love the first book, but I loved this book because I don't typically like the daddy kink. Brianna Hale loves the daddy kink. I don't love it. However, I loved it in this because it's more about aftercare and praise like that's kind of the relationship that the dom sub relationship that they have um whereas the first book was much more like you have the bratty sub or whatever but in this one he is very much about like praising her and everything it also has it's a plus size heroine i was a little bit worried having a plus size heroine and then having the relationship with her personal trainer because i was like is the only focus going to be on her losing weight it is not at all they both love her body exactly how it is it's not about weight loss it's about just like feeling better and like getting on a schedule and stuff and lifestyle things it's not necessarily about losing weight at all and um, it, it, that definitely comes across, but yeah, it, it, this is another one that has a lot of things that I normally wouldn't like, like the daddy kink and the dom sub thing typically aren't my thing, but because of the praise and the caretaking, I love it. I loved it so much. And it's a pretty short book too. Um, mine is Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare, which is a witchy rom-com, I guess. Our heroine is like a regular person and she needs a new job. And so she ends up um, like answering this ad in a paper for some, being a familiar. And she thinks that it, it is this ad for her favorite card game and it is not. And she ends up going work <laughs> to work with this like really eccentric older woman, like this grandma type woman. And so she lives in her house and the old lady keeps telling her that she's a witch. And she's like, yeah, I need you to help me with spells. And our heroine thinks that the old lady is off her rocker. <laughs> so she just keeps going <laughs> along with it until the nephew shows up and he is a warlock. And the two of them accidentally turn our heroine into a cat. And she realizes <laughs> that magic is real. And our hero is a really like begrudging romance. Like he's a reluctant hero and he becomes obsessed with the heroine. And he's like, He's like, I hate her stupid, adorable hair, and she smells so good, and I hate her sort of thing. <laughs> and forced proximity because they're living in the same house together. And it's them trying to figure out and, like, handle all of the grumpy grandmas that keep casting spells against each other. It's really cute. It's really funny. And the Aww. cover guy is based off of Adam Driver, so which is why I picked it up. <laughs> See, I didn't pick this book up because I was like, oh, this doesn't seem great, but you just you just pitched it and now I want to read it. So <laughs> yeah. It seems Good like pitching. it's going to be like the typical witchy thing, but it actually kind of wasn't like that at all because the heroine isn't a witch. And it's more about and it's actually perfect too because the heroine, when she figures out magic is real, she doesn't just like buy into it. She's like super reluctant. She's like, this cannot be real, which I appreciated. 
because I feel like too often they're just like accepting about it. And she was like, for right. half the book, she was like, I'm got hit in my head or something. <laughs> like, <right. laughs> All right. Um, so H, this is my Alexis Hall entry. It was How to Bang a Billionaire, uh, which yes. is the first book in the Ardents and Ives series. And I have the shortest pitch for this one, which is basically 50 shades of grey, but make it gay and better. Um, yes. I stand by that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much all you need to know, except that there mm -hmm. are some hilarious side characters in this series mm -hmm. as well. And the whole thing is great, but you do not get an HEA or an HFN in this book. Um, yeah, you will at the end. Yeah, you will at the end. Um, the end of the series. Yeah, <laughs> it's only three books. That's fine. Yeah, that's not forever. So good. It's so good. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not adding anything to that pitch because I stand by it. <laughs> that's all you need. That's all you need to know. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, I have take a hint, Danny Brown. Uh, because uh, this is my favorite uh, male main character Ugh. and he he used to play rugby and now he's like trying to do nonprofits and uh, they accidentally go viral on a tweet because there was a what was it a fire drill and Danny <laughs> gets stuck in an elevator and doesn't realize it's a drill and so like She's freaking out and it's it's great. So they're meet cute, Sorry. well meet cute because they know each other, but they're like meet cute on the internet is great because it goes viral. Someone posts about it. And mm -hmm. then they fake date to uh, help with his uh, nonprofit stuff and uh, fake dating always leads to something more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. But yeah, this was great. I loved it. He what is the best off hero. hero. He is so yes. good. I love him. Um, so my H is Hearts in Darkness by Laura Kay. This is a novella. And I read this years and years ago, but it has quickly become one that is a comfort read for me. I reread it over and over and over again. One of the best meet cutes ever. I am such a sucker for meet cutes, and this is one of the best ones. The hero also has anxiety, and the panic attack and anxiety representation is really, really good. He is, and he works as an EMS works for EMS. I don't know how you word that. Um, but they end up getting stuck in an elevator together in the pitch black. So they never actually see each other, but they're stuck in an elevator and he starts to have a panic attack and she starts talking to him, like helping him with his panic attack. And then they end up just having this amazing conversation and falling for each other in the dark without ever seeing each other. Um, and then, you know, things happen from there, but it's, it's a novella. I do recommend reading the second book to it because that one has really good anxiety representation too. And it just kind of extends their story a little bit. I think she has like a 10 year anniversary book. That's a bind up of the first book, the second book, and all of the little like scenes that she wrote in between. And that one's really good, like to just read it all together. But I adore this book so much, like top all-time favorite and one of my all-time favorites. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I read this one. Oh, I like this one. Parts mm -hmm. of darkness. <laughs> For my age, I went with <laughs> Hollow's Grove by Ubi. I think it's Jaco. I do not know how to pronounce this author's last name, and I need to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a best friend's brother romance set at a murder mystery party, and the hero is a pleasure dom, and all he wants to do yeah. is bring the heroine as much pleasure as she can, and it's fantastic. Um, they have yeah. like this bad timing sort of thing going on where they had a crush on each other when they were younger, but he was two years older than her. And then he had a girlfriend and she had a girlfriend and they kind of have like a bickering thing going on. But now they're both single. It is such a good book. Story. It's so good. <laughs> it is set during Halloween, but like there's no real Halloween stuff. It's like a murder mystery party. So you could read it whenever. And it is. It's very good. The steam in here was fantastic. So <laughs> highly recommend. So good. I checked it out That's on KU enough. and then I gave it back without reading it. So I should probably actually read it. <laughs> it's I've never it. read a pleasure dom story before. Never I had never heard of that, but um it was very good. Yeah, it was the first time I'd heard of it too. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so for Jay, I have Dr. Heartless um, by Jay Seaman. Uh, see if it'll come up. And I, I think I read this because I was reading books with doctors in them and I happen to have this one. Um, so I totally read it out of order in the series. I think I've read book three and book four. Um, and this one is a, a one night stand that then ends up with both parties ending up being next door neighbors. And I think yeah. she's also, the heroine is also a teacher at his daughter's school, if not his daughter's teacher. I can't remember exactly how that worked out. Um, but he is a widowed single dad um, who's also a doctor. And the heroine has escaped an abusive relationship. And after they sort of get over the awkwardness of being a one night stand turned neighbors, turned very much involved in each other's lives, um, yeah, they fall in love. And it's great. <laughs> I liked this one more than I liked book four, um, but I haven't read the others of the series yet. What but letter I think are all we of on? I? No, oh, J. Wow. Oh, I. It's I. Oh. Oh, no. that's, I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Do you know? I was like, wait, no, we're on. Do you I know what I did, show? Robin? I did what you did with your Instagram post. <laughs> and I've got I after I just told later. It doesn't it's matter. Fine. The order doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> do you want me to do I was my like, wait, I skip doing Jay? No, that's me. Um, you can do the other one. I. Are we all going to switch them? <laughs> are we all going to do yeah, Jay then I? Just... We'll just yeah. do J then I. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's Sorry. fine. My bad. We're changing the alphabet. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. You can B B Y X T S B A. It's fine. Like it's fine. It was made up. It's arbitrary. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It was just a thing we all agreed on. Um, okay, so for for I slash J, I have um, "Halfway to the Grave" by Janine Frost. Um because Bones is uh, one of my favorite vampire heroes ever. But that's really it. Uh, so mm -hmm. it is about uh, a girl named Kat who's a half vampire and a vampire hunter. And Bones, who is a um, like a vampire hitman, basically. And she tries to take him down, thinking that he will be easy prey and uh, he thinks that she's a spy for like some other entity that's trying to like hunt him down. So this is another one where um, their meeting ends in him kidnapping, chaining her and interrogating <laughs> her. <laughs> that's their <laughs> second meeting or first meeting technically. So yeah, uh, there's this is also like a long series and it follows the same couple through the whole series. So if you really like those type of books then um, I recommend this one. But Bones is the best. So even if you just read this one, Bones is the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're doing J, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my J is, of course, Jacob by Jacqueline Frank. This is all the J's. See, I knew the... you were going to pick that one or else I was, I was like, oh, it's right there on my bookshelf. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's a Brie book. <laughs> That's a Brie book <laughs> because <laughs> it was a Brie book because it was my very first adult romance I've ever read in my life. And it has since become a comfort read. It's partially because of it being the first adult romance I ever read. Like I did not know <laughs> the graphic scenes that would happen, like steamy scenes in books. Cause I had always read like YA romance and everything. And this one I picked up and I was very much, I, I remember my face just turning red as I was reading it. I was like, oh my. And then I marathoned this entire series and the spinoff series. But Jacqueline Frank is such a beautiful writer too. And it has a great overarching plot as well. So I just love the series in general. Um, this is this was published in 2006, I think. So it is very much of its time, but I still love it even to this day. If you like obsessive possessive heroes, this is the hero is a demon. It, he's much more like um, they're elemental creatures. And they remind me a lot more of like vampires because they can only be around at night. But they also can't be around technology at all. And um, Jacob is an enforcer. So 
everyone, everyone in his species is kind of afraid of him. So he's a little bit of a loner because they're meant to be scared of him. He's the one who enforces the law because demons cannot mate with humans or do anything with humans because they could kill them. But then he ends up falling for a human. And it's just fantastic. And I love it because she's a virgin, but it gets to a point where she he's like, you know, like he's trying to fight his feelings for her and everything. And she, he's like, I can't do anything with you. And she's like, fine, I'll go out and I'll find someone else to do something, do like mate with me or whatever. And he's just like blows up on her. <laughs> like, he's like, absolutely not. So if you like that obsessive possessive hero who also is like kind of treats the heroine like she's fragile as well, then you'll like this. If you really wanted uh, another earthquake during sex, a la yep. a court of missing theory, <laughs> Yes. Then, then read Jacob. <laughs> yeah. If that's just like the thing that you were missing, and you were just like, God, I yeah. really wish I could have this experience again. Yeah, because he his, <laughs> his affinity is with Earth, so he definitely causes some some issues when he gets wrapped up. I love that. One of the few books I read um, because of you, because it didn't have crying in it. <laughs> yes, it's not super super emotional. <laughs> I've had this on my TV went for with, ages. Read it. <laughs> I went with Jackson James, and it's the Frat Wars series. I think the first one is King of Thieves, but I'm not positive. Um, it might come up. There's no the. No the. Yeah. There it is. Um, this is the like least angsty book I've ever read in my entire life. It is all surrounding mm. these like frat guys. And it is this frat house where these guys are all like super emotionally like in tune with themselves and they have like therapy nights and all of these things. They're all athletes. And so they all get together like weekly and talk about their feelings. It's really cute. And oh they God. have this rivalry with one of the other frat houses where they play pranks on each other's. That's, that's their whole rivalry is that they have this prank war and at the end of every year they have a winner. And it's three books long and it's all about these guys just living it up for their last year in college and falling in love. There's literally no angst. There's no drama. There's nothing. It is just really, really cute. If you want to watch it. a bunch of frat guys fall in love, it's adorable. <laughs> I've never heard of this, but now I want to. I want to read it. It's one of those books where you just pick up when you need, like, you just need to smile because there's no angst in here. There's no real yeah. drama. It's just, it's just a good time. It's really cute. I'm like, do I have time to read these before guys. rare? <laughs> <laughs> when you have guys who go to therapy, then you get the low Yeah, angst. Yeah, they all talk. They have, um, one of them has asthma and like one of the guys literally kicks down a door so that he can get the guy some fresh air. Like that's how much these Aww. guys love each other. A lot. <laughs> Their friendship that. is so good. It's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very good. That's awesome. All right, since I apparently don't know the alphabet, um, my I was The Investigator by Anna Hackett, which is the first book in Norcross Security. It is romantic suspense, so you can tell where I am in my list because it's literally going through all the romantic suspense books that I've read mm -hmm. in the last 12 months. Um, and this one is a romance between a private investigator and a museum cu uh, curator who has absolutely zero self-preservation skills in this book. Um, but she is also, oh, sorry, the hero is her best friend's brother in this. And, oh, sorry, I'm just dropping things on the floor. Um, but it was really fun and it was a great intro into the series. And I then went and marathoned every single book in the series after reading this one. <laughs> I've never heard of this series. Me now I need to read it. I'm also in my, like, romantic suspense era, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not regretting it. <laughs> um, my eye is Intercepted by Alexa Martin. Uh, if you haven't read this yet, um, I know it was big like a few years ago, but uh, it is a football romance written by a football wife, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, but this this woman uh finds out that her 
live-in boyfriend who plays for a football team that name escapes me um like was was cheating on her and she was like oh man f this i'm out and just started like i think she threw his stuff out i think it was the other way around i think like like but anyways she was like i'm out like f this guy she like grabs all of her stuff and like tries to leave and then the new quarterback was uh who was a an ex one night stand comes uh to her rescue and helps her out and it's great so <laughs> i just i just love it it's great um i think i've read it at least two or three times because it's just a, a fun football romance so if you're looking for a football romance intercepted and alexa martin was actually uh her husband She's, yeah her husband uh, yeah, yeah. NFL player she has good insight yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that was cool. Um, so I chose The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. This is the second book in the, we think it's the roommate series, but they, you can read it as a standalone. You don't need to read the first one. I liked the first one, but I loved this one. I loved this one so much more. So the heroine is an ex-porn star, and now she's a public speaker of some sort, if I remember correctly. And the hero is a rabbi, and he hires her to talk about like sex positive stuff to like his youth group or something but um I he's such a freaking cinnamon roll hero I love him so much and I just I had so many butterflies while and was swooning so much while I was reading this book I loved it so much so good it's especially for a traditional very, very book. Mm -hmm. yeah the Jewish yeah. record she's really good too mm. yeah and she's got she's gone into sex education that's why she's a that's the public speaking right. she's been doing and mm -hmm. she's been trying to expand her her sort of business mm -hmm. it's a great book yeah i'm glad i had a backup because that was <coughs> that was mine originally <laughs> but <laughs> um it takes yeah <laughs> i do i did have a backup for this one so which is it takes two to tumble by cat sebastian cat sebastian is after alexis hall mm -hmm. my favorite historical author um they mm -hmm. write fantastic queer historical romances. This is the start of the Seducing the Sedwicks series. There are three books. Um, this first one is a take on oh, that Julie Andrews movie. Uh, Sound of Music. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, what is it called? <laughs> um, but we have a hero whose kids are kind of wild and their mother has passed away and the guy comes back. He's a naval captain and he needs a way to like rein his kids in. And so he has one of the local guys come and take care of his kids and try to get them to focus and calm back down. And the two of them have a romance and it's really, really cute. I loved them a lot. Mm -hmm. This is another one that doesn't have like a whole lot of angst in it. It's just kind of these yeah. two falling in love and being softies and it's really cute with their family. Um, the rest mm -hmm. of the series is also fantastic. And there's caretaking in the third book. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the third one's my favorite. <laughs> I like Cat Sebastian. I love Cat yeah. Sebastian. I really like this one. All right. We're on K. K is the next letter. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just clarifying. Um, <laughs> I had Kiss of Steel by Beck McMaster, which is London Steampunk book one. So it is, it, this first book's mostly paranormal, um, historical paranormal romance. Uh, and this one is basically steampunk with vampires. And it is very, very steamy. And the heroine ends up going to the hero for help with a situation and then sort of finds herself in over her head a little bit, but it's great. And I'm kind of kicking myself that I have not continued on in the series because <laughs> I really, really love this one. Um, I am I am leaving the romance, uh, adult romance genre now. So um, I'm gonna <laughs> try to hold up as many as I can to help you out, Steph. Oh, good. Um, so the first one I have, Kimi ni toloke. Um, it is a shoujo manga and it has like, it, it's a really long series, but 
they get they don't it's not a slow burn like they get together within i think like the first half of the of the series and it's super cute so this girl her name is um sawako but she looks like the girl from the ring so they call her sarako because that's the name of the girl (laughs) in the ring um and because of that like no one wants to talk to her they think she's cursed and this guy like has a crush on her and he's one of the most popular guys in school and he thinks that she's lovely and not scary and so she's shy and awkward and he's popular but also this is like high school first love so he like doesn't know how to act around her it's so cute so she's like oh he's just being friendly because he's friendly to everyone and he's just like how do I get her to acknowledge that I like her (laughs) and it's so (laughs) cute and so it's it's about their relationship blossoming and her finding friendship and acceptance in high school so it's just it's great I I love this series so much so I highly recommend Kimini Todoke (laughs) cute um, so I chose Not My Type by Evie Mitchell. Um, this one is a novella and it is part of her All Access series. And it's called All Access because the heroine is on a podcast called the All Access Podcast. And they talk about disability and sexuality. And they end up interviewing the hero in this because he teaches Shibari and it is accessible to everyone. The heroine is a wheelchair user. There's so much tension between the two of them because she ends up going to one of his classes and he uses her as like for demonstration and Shibari is rote work and it's usually very sexual. And so he's like tying her up and everything and in front of everyone. So there's a ton of tension between the two of them and there's great caretaking in it. It's just, it's so swoony and so good. This whole series is great. And he knocks down a mm-hmm. wall mid dinner yeah. because the door isn't big enough yeah. for her. And that is my favorite scene ever. <laughs> I know. I love it so much. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. Him knocking down that wall for her is like one of the greatest romantic gestures in a book ever. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because she wasn't she like going to like go down the road or something to go use the bathroom yeah. because she couldn't get. It. Yeah. And he's like, no, hold on a yeah, second. <laughs> <laughs> it just knocks it down. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. so good. <laughs> Gretchen, find yourself a man who knocks down walls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm excited for the um, new book too. Yeah. I went with, oh God, I just lost my whole list here. Here we go. <laughs> Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. Um, it is another fantasy romance and it is... The best way that I can word this is this is not a book that you haven't read before, but you're going to want to read it again. (laughs) It's like that really generic sort of fantasy romance plot. And it's just extremely addicting. If you like Aquatar, (laughs) if you like From Blood and Ash, if you like From uh, Fate of Wrath and Flame, it's in the same vein where you have that like bad guy hero and the heroine without a whole ton of agency. And the two of them come together and she realizes that the bad guy isn't actually that bad and the good guys aren't actually that good and now they need to take down the guys that they thought they thought were good it has a great like tension filled romance because he is like the bad guy and she doesn't know if she should go along with him and a lot of gray line or like gray morality things in there it's it's a good time i enjoyed it a lot it doesn't exactly bring anything new to the fantasy romance genre but it's one you can't help but binge so it's very well done. I am swooning. I'm swooning over he is darkness and sin. And when he whispers promises of wickedness in my ear, I crave a man who I can't have. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, and it at the very beginning, it feels like it might be a love triangle, and it it's not like the the good guy that she's originally betrothed to is a total jerk, and he's not like really a part of it. So there is no love triangle. If you read like the first chapter and you were like, I don't like love triangles, it's it's not a love triangle. No. All right. Well, I had learned my lesson by Katie Robert because mm-hmm. every, like I, I very agree. rarely don't have a carry- <laughs> Katie Robert book in here. <laughs> and this is my favourite in the Wicked Villain series. And I will 
not accept any other answer for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> hard agree, hard agree. <laughs> I feel like this is a series where everyone has their favourites and I'm like, no, this is this is my line. This is my favorite one. Mine, um, mine's the first one. <laughs> is I know favorite. yours is the first. One. <laughs> See. Um, so this is an MMF relationship between Hades, Hercules, and Meg, and it starts off with Hades and Meg sort of seducing and coercing Hercules into a deal to get back at Zeus, and then they all start to develop feelings for one another and Hades and Meg are sort of going through this rough patch in their relationship and like I wish in some ways I wish that had been explored a little bit more but because the book is so short um, I think what we get in that time is pretty good but it is just a really really great story in that series. Hercules is the best himbo I just love him so much. Oh he's (laughs) so good yeah he's so good um, okay, so for my L, I have Yakuza Lover. Um, like, look look at that cover. It's just so great. So uh, <laughs> basically, this this college girl, I love that it's all in Japanese. Uh, so yeah. this college girl goes to, like, a party with her friends. And um, she, this guy, like, hits on her. And she says, go away. And he keeps trying to hit on her. And so she's like, fine, I'll make you go away and like lifts a chair to like hit him with it. And then uh, this guy comes in and is like, hey, what's the issue? And like breaks it up. And then he's like, you have intrigued me because <laughs> you were threatening this guy with a chair. So um, <laughs> he he asks her like out on a date and she finds out that he's like the head of this Yakuza clan. And um, then they start a romance together. And it is it is so good because he's he's the best, and she makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you you can raid my manga library whenever you want, Morgan. I have a lot. <laughs> I have so much. I'm like going through all of my boxes and boxes of books, and I don't have the room for them. It's bad. I have all 36 <laughs> volumes of The Wallflower. What am I supposed to do with 36 <laughs> volumes of a book? That's a lot. <laughs> So my L is Little Lies by Helena Hunting. This is kind of a spinoff series of the Pucked series. So if you liked the Pucked series, you definitely want to read this because it's the kids of the Pucked series people. Um, But you don't have to read the Pucked series to read this. Um, But I love this one so much. Huh? You should read Pucked. Yes, (laughs) Yes, I love that series so freaking much. But that's a comfort series. I think I've read the whole series at least three times. Um, but this one took me by surprise because it is a new adult romance. It's college age. And I don't typically love that. Um, but the, it's childhood friends to enemies to lovers. And there's a little bit of bullying in it. And I don't love bullying. However, the pining in this and the grovel in this is top tier. This might have the best grovel I've ever read. Um, in a book and you'll know why if you read it but basically the hero and the heroine were very very close as kids and they both have anxiety and they kind of were each other's safe person and their parents got a little bit nervous about them being so close um so they separated them and in order for the hero to kind of cope with that he ends up like kind of you know being mean to her to kind of keep her away from him but then it all comes to a head when they're in college and there is amazing grovel. I'm just going to reread the whole Puck series and then start the second gen. Mm, it's worth it. All right, I'm going with an old one. So it's called Lost in Me by Lexi Ryan. And this is one of my favorite love triangles ever. It's also an amnesia love triangle. It has its flaws, let me tell you, because it is an older book. <laughs> so there are some there are some things in here discussing about like uh, weight and food in here that is not my favorite. But <laughs> the amnesia and the love triangle are fantastic. Our heroine, right at the beginning of the book, um, ends up waking up in the hospital, and her sister is next to her, and her sister's crying, and she has no memories of the last, I think it's two years 
And now she's engaged to like this guy that she had a crush on her entire life. And when she goes back to her apartment that night, a different man sneaks into her house and starts making moves on her. And she has no idea who this guy is, but she realizes that she's been having an affair with this guy, even though she's engaged to somebody else. And she's trying to unravel what has happened. Each of the books is like 200 pages. It's a trilogy. It's a really good time. It's over the top and ridiculous. But I read this <laughs> entire series in like, <laughs> I think I started it like Saturday morning and I finished it Sunday afternoon. Because you just need to know. <laughs> you need to know who, <laughs> who she picks Jesus. and how she got here. <laughs> oh, I love a love triangle where you don't know who she's going to end up with. Because I the only yes. time love triangles annoy me is when you know the whole time who they're going to end up with. And then that annoys yeah. me. But I like when you're not sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's definitely very good. And especially since you don't know why she chose this other mm -hmm. guy, like what was, so you don't know what was happening in their relationship at any mm -hmm. point. So you have no idea who to root for because you're like, <laughs> why were you eating? Why were you, you know, was something going on? You don't know. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very good. And all the while you're trying to figure out how she lost, like how she lost her memories, like what happened to her to put her there. So there's like a slight mystery element throughout the whole thing as well it's very it's very mm. addicting <laughs> that's fun <laughs> nice uh for m i had moth by lily main she's the fifth book in the monster series and moth is just one of my favorite favorite characters in the series um so this is a bit of a grumpy sunshine monster romance and all of the characters in this one are absolute sweethearts and I really love them. But in this one, they are looking to find the camp's missing leader. And they end up getting caught up with some with a cannibal cult. Um, and this one does, well, this entire series has content warnings and trigger warnings for violence and gruesome stuff anyway. But yeah. I really like the relationship in this one. Moth is just pressure. He he has so many walls up and they all come down in this one, which is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I need to finish this series. I need to start mm -hmm. the series. Mm -hmm. I, I need to do. continue on with the series. <laughs> I think the first book's getting an audiobook finally, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm really bad with not reading books if they don't have audiobooks. I know, me too. And awesome. and the first book's pretty long also, so that's even yeah. more of a deterrent for me. Yeah. All right. Um, moving into Cozy Mysteries, I have Color Me Murder by Krista Davis. And I love that, like, the book looks like coloring pages. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is about a uh, bookshop um, worker slash a uh, coloring book artist and uh she the the owner of the bookshop says hey do you want to live in my carriage house because i'm rich and we're in boston and she says that would be great and then she's like wait but why and how much is it going to cost me and he says it'll cost you nothing because i need but I need you there by this afternoon because I don't want my nephew to move into my carriage house because I don't like <laughs> my nephew. He is a leech. And so I need to show that someone lives there. So mm -hmm. um, she moves into the bookstore owner's carriage house uh, so that the nephew can't get it. And uh, the next day, the nephew is found dead in the bookshop. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, that's basically how the whole book starts. So they're trying to figure out who murdered the nephew and why. And um, the, the the romance in it, which is a thing that I actually really like, because if it doesn't have romance, I get bored, is um, <laughs> between her and the new like police chief in town. And he's so sweet because someone is like trying to get into the carriage house and she starts freaking out because she's like, oh my gosh, the, the killer is coming for me next. And so he sleeps on her couch for like a week just to make sure that she's extra safe. <laughs> it's so sweet. Like Aww. he's like, no, I need to make sure that you're protected. I'm If it's okay with you, I will sleep on your couch. If it's not okay with you, then I will just do patrols all night in my car. 
And so it's just like, it's so sweet. And so he like stays at her house with her and they start forming that bond. It's great. I have not read a cozy mystery in ages. Color Me Murder is a good one to start with. I've I've read a lot and that one is, it's a solid one. It's her newer series. So like, I don't know if I've ever read a cozy mystery. Um, okay. I have a few on my TBR from like a few people who read cozy mysteries. So I will add this one too. Um, so my M is most of all you by Mia Sheridan. I feel like this one is the most underrated of Mia Sheridan's books. Um, so this one, there's a ton of trigger warnings for this one and it is quite emotional but the heroine has a very troubled past. Like as a child, she was kind of abandoned by her mother and her father didn't really care about her, but she ends up becoming a stripper. And then the hero was kidnapped as a child for like something like seven years or something. And then he ends up escaping. But because of that, he has an aversion to like touch, but he ends up going to the strip club where the heroine is. And she's like, up on the stage stripping, but they keep making eye contact with each other. And then he comes back after her set and he's like, he proposes to her. It, it's something similar to like the kiss quotient where he's like, can you just help me get used to touch? Cause he felt like a connection to her as he was watching her. And at first she says no, but then something happens and she ends up agreeing to it. There's great caretaking in this one. It's really, really good and very underrated by Mia Sheridan. My M is Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert, which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite short stories by Talia Hibbert. It is a shifter romance between our hero, who is a werewolf, and our heroine, who is like a werewolf hunter, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And she is trying to prove herself to her family. So when this werewolf comes into her coffee shop and she realizes that he's a werewolf, she's like, I'm going to get him to ask me on a date so that I can kill him. And he (laughs) is completely in love with her. Like he's like a little puppy dog werewolf who is absolutely (laughs) obsessed with heroin. (laughs) And every time she tries to kill him, he falls in love with her even more (laughs) and thinks that it's some sort of like cute game that they're playing. And it is, (laughs) it is your adorable romance. (laughs) It is so cute. It's one of my favorite short stories by her, and I'm really hoping she continues with it soon because I laughed my whole the whole way through one. I'm worried she's not gonna I continue need to re-read it them. Was published a while a while ago. It's like she two, posted three years recently. Ago. Yeah, she actually just posted on her Instagram though that she is writing it. It's just she's a, she's like, I'm a slow reader. But she's like, yeah. it is in process. <laughs> so <clears throat> nice. All right. For N, I had Alpha Knight, which is book four in the Psy Trinity series. So way, way into the Psy Changing series. But I really love this one because we finally got a female Alpha in one of the packs. And uh, Selenka is the Alpha of the Russian wolf pack, uh, uh, wolf changeling group and I loved her a lot she is very no-nonsense um, sort of alpha and she ends up finding that her um, other half is an arrow form or an arrow who is um, one of a member of the Psy and he has a bit of a, a damaged background he, his actual Psy ability and the way it was used has caused him to become kind of unstable. And he is just absolutely gone for her in this book. And he kind of follows her around like he is the puppy dog in this relationship, despite mm-hmm. the fact that he's meant to be this big bad Psy soldier. <laughs> and I loved it a lot. Um, but, but you do have a character who's kind of dealing with PTSD in this one. So... I really need to catch up with this series. I'm still in the yeah. side changeling series. <laughs> yeah. So many books. So many. I'm, I'm only caught up because there, of the there book are books. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um 
My next one is Her Naughty Holiday by Tiffany Reese. And uh, basically just the whole Men at Work trilogy is great for uh, holiday reading because the first one is Halloween. The second one is- I have that one for later. (laughs) The third one is Christmas. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, Megan. I mean, there's no Halloween. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, I just recommend all three of those books. But this was the one that would fit in this uh, this slot because of the end. But um, yeah, it's uh, a girl or a woman who has to host Thanksgiving, and uh, for her family, and her family likes to harp on her for being single. So she's like. Hey, (laughs) you want to pretend to be like my date? And um, the guy who's a single father is like, yeah, sure. And he's a contractor that she knows. And it's really cute. (laughs) I love this book so much. It's it's really good. Yeah, I liked it too. I I liked all three. So I highly recommend if you're just like, man, I really want to read for the seasons this Mm -hmm. fall time. Get all these on your and PBR. super steamy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're mm-hmm. Harlequin Blaze, so they're all steamy. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> so mine is The Nightmare by Regine Abel. You can read this as a standalone, you don't have to read the first book, but the first book is really good too. I love this book so much, it's such a unique story because he is the personification of the heroine's nightmares, and the world is very, very interesting in it. Um, so because he is a nightmare, it's a little bit enemies ish to lovers, I guess, because he does antagonize her a little bit, but he's also obsessed with her and he's very possessive of her. There's morality chain in it. It's I hate everyone, but you, because basically the only thing that's keeping him from destroying everybody is the fact that he's in love with her, like obsessed with her. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, it's a very, very interesting world that this takes place in. Mine is Neighborly by Katrina Jackson, which yeah. is one of the steamiest books I've ever read. It's <laughs> so fantastic. This is one of the few books that like legitimately made me blush while I was reading it. And I read a lot of romance, but this one is a, it's these two couples who are very happily together. And one of the couples moves in to the house that's like next door to this other couple. And the two women have this massive attraction to each other and their significant others let them explore that attraction and it is it's so well done there's great communication there's a lot of really good steamy scenes in here and just very loving and supportive long-term relationships which i just i loved i loved it Mm -hmm. a lot like very healthy relationships yeah yeah Mm -hmm. And like the the communication in here to me was really important because like at no point was anyone doing something that somebody else wasn't comfortable with. And like Katrina Jackson made sure to like do that on page, which was mm-hmm. was very well done. Yes. All right. Um, for O, um, I had Oh Hello Ye Shoppers, which was a Christmas short story slash novella. Um, mm-hmm. most, closer to short story because it's, um, under 30 pages and this is a contemporary MM romance and the two main characters meet each other at a or while they're in line in a store at a shopping center before Christmas and they just commiserate over the fact that everyone loses their mind during <laughs> Christmas shopping and it was short and quick and to the point and I appreciated that <laughs> I just love that title yeah yeah Anyone who's worked retail would go, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I worked Black Friday at a bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I worked Black Friday at Target. And it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. No, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, for mine, I have Manly Appetites, Minagishi Loves Otsu. And uh, 
It's so cute. It is a an MM workplace romance. Uh, it's only, I think it's only three or four books long. So it's like really short because these are, these are really short books too. And uh, this, this guy right here is Minagishi and he is the like hottie of the, um, the office and everyone loves him and he can do no wrong. And then uh, that's Otsu and he is kind of a grump and he's just like, ugh, I hate Minagishi because everyone loves him and even though like he doesn't try hard everyone still loves him and i'm just here and so he's all like murmur 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 but me nagishi <laughs> loves otsu so much like he's like this guy is so cute and i just want to make him happy and so he keeps giving like treats to otsu like little presents or he's like oh i stopped by the bakery and i remember you said you like these so you can get him like cupcakes or something and otsu's just like uh, he's just trying to butter me up along with the rest of the office. And then he's like, oh, man, but these are such good cupcakes. And then, like, you just see <laughs> me and Hishi in the corner just being like, he's eating my cupcakes. And it's just, it's so cute. And so um, just the whole thing is just Otsu being completely oblivious to this guy's attentions and affections. And it's it's adorable. So <laughs> a, a low angst. A uh, really cute workplace romance that's really short if you're trying to like get into manga and you don't want a giant series. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so for my O, I chose The Other Girl by Trisha Wolf. Um, Tr Trisha Wolf is probably my favorite dark romance writer. This one is very, very dark. And this again has some uh, tropes that I don't normally like. Like it is age gap, but to be fair, and it all is also teacher student ish. Um, but to be fair, they're not, the age gap isn't that bad. And it does take place in high school, which is another thing I don't normally like in age gaps. However, um, the heroine is in her early 20s and she is his counselor and the hero like maybe stayed back a year or something cause he's 18. So the age doesn't bother me that much. And the power imbalance doesn't bother me too much because he actually is much more dominant over her, but this is a very twisted story and very, very, very morally gray characters. And um, again, takes place in high school and everything, but there's, there's a lot going on in this and there's murder and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, if you like morally gray characters, especially when both of them are very morally gray, then you will like this one. Trisha Wolf does that dynamic so well though, that like power imbalance, because she does that in some of her other books. And it's always so well done. It is. And she's able to like flip the switch on you too. Like <laughs> Yeah. Don't realize yeah. that maybe the power imbalance isn't quite what you think. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My O is One is a Promise by Pam Godwin, which is another love triangle. I love love triangles. So, so do I. But this is another one where this is another one where you do not know until the last section in book three whether like who she's gonna pick. So in this yeah. first one, she, you are following a heroine who was madly in love with a guy and they were engaged and they lived together, and suddenly he dies, and a guy shows up at her house that is insisting that she come work at his um, casino because she is like a dancer or something like that. And she pulls in a lot of money. And so he wants her to dance at his casino and he pretty much forces her to do it. And the two of them end up having this big romance. And then right at the end of book one, something happens and it creates a love triangle. And the whole series is following these same characters three books long the books are like 300 pages so you can binge them really easily which you're going to want to and mm -hmm. it is not until the last chapter of book three that you finally figure out who she's going to choose and it's fantastic probably one of my favorite love triangles of all time and i have another love triangle on this list yet so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, this is also pam godwin also does a lot of dark stuff um, but if you mm. want to read the Deliver series, I recommend reading this one first because the Deliver series does ruin this love triangle. Mm. Okay. All right. For P, I had 
no, let's not go with that because I don't want to see that. <laughs> um, the Potter by Christy Marie, um, which was another one of the books that I read for when I was doing the Dr. Romance vlogs. And this one is about a woman who was involved in I think it was a car accident and she had crushed trauma from the accident and so she's been left with lots and lots of scarring and she tracks down the best reconstructive surgeon that she can find and sort of uses the last of her money to try and travel out there and to try and get him to do her surgery and that's the hero and he turns her down and she's devastated by this and he works in a sort of a private practice and his partner um, doesn't know why the, why the hero is being a grump and decides to offer her a job as his secretary because he needs um, someone to man his office and so they end up working in the same space and he has to see her every day and um, get to know her and yeah it was it was it's a very interesting book to read and I actually wouldn't mind going back and reading the other book or books, I can't remember if there's more than one in the series, um, because the character dynamics were really, really well done because there's a there's a lot of trauma for both the characters um, that they have to overcome in their relationship. So it does become a doctor-patient relationship, but they establish the relationship first. So, yes. Um, I, I have gotten into my book of... Uh it's long enough that I could put it anywhere. So uh, I married my best friend to shut my parents up. <laughs> and um, it's really cute. This, uh, this woman, she's very like business oriented and her parents are like, you need to settle down. You need to settle down. And so her friend is like, just marry me. And so she's like, I'm not gay. She's like, that's okay. Just marry me. And so the, the friend has had a crush on her for a while and she doesn't push her or, any, or anything. Like, so they end up living together, pretending that they're dating. And the friend is like, hey, you wanna, I don't know, you wanna kiss? Maybe, maybe you'll feel something. And the girl's like, no. And she's like, all right, just thought I'd ask. And then like, she'd walk away. And um, so I really liked that it wasn't like pushing boundaries, <laughs> but because they started living together, the, the business girl started being like, thinking about her differently, I guess. And then she's like, wait, maybe the reason I haven't been dating men is because I don't like men. <laughs> and so she has like this like introspective moment because she can't stop thinking about her best friend and it's very sweet. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. Um, so we're on P, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I had to choose one of my all-time favorite books from last year, and that's Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I freaking love this book so much. Um, this one took me by surprise because it is a uh, traditionally published book, but I've already reread this book because I love it so much. Um, basically, you have a small town guy. He is a carpenter, carpenter slash he is taking care of this bed and breakfast. And he kind of owns that. And then the heroine is like a big city girl. She's a surgeon. She comes from a very prestigious family of surgeons. And they have one of the best meat cutes I've ever read. I, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of great meat cutes. Um, but they have a great meat cute. And she is not able, like it's somewhat forbidden because of her family. And they like live three hours away from each other. But he becomes her comfort person. And the small town becomes her comfort place because she's dealing with a lot of stress in, in the city where she lives and everything and the job that she has. But her parents have very high expectations for her of who she should be with and everything. So she kind of keeps the relationship a little bit a secret, but he is so cinnamon rolly and so sweet and so good to her. And I just, I love it so much. I highly recommend the audiobook. The audiobook is really, really good. I'm glad I had a backup for P. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my, <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Um, yeah. My other one is Parallel by Elizabeth O'Rourke, which is a time travel romance. And it's a duet. Mm. So you do want both books because you don't get the AGA until book two. Um, but you are following this heroine 
who goes at the beginning of the book, she is like with her fiance and they are looking at a wedding venue and they are at this lake and she looks across the lake and she sees this cabin and suddenly she has this like weird memory vision thing and she passes out. And so her mother takes her to the hospital. And when she is there, the doctor that is working on her, she has been seeing in her dreams like her entire life. And she starts questioning everything she knows because she knows this person, but she has never met him before. And she is trying to figure out why she is having visions of this house and how does she know this guy that she's never met. And it is it is their romance. It is very, very, intru- I, I don't want to say too much because it's, there's a lot of reveals that happen in this book, but there is time travel stuff in here and it's it's very well done it's very twisty and turny and you're gonna want both books no you're not gonna be able to stop at just one because it does this first one does end on a cliffhanger <laughs> but they're short <laughs> they're less than three hundred pages. so okay i've seen that cover around before yeah it's, it's pretty it's probably um, I think it's the only time travel romance i've ever read but it's really good cool um, so for Q, I had King and Queen by Maz Maddox, which is the third book in the Relic series, which is paranormal romance with dinosaur shifters and completely bonkers <laughs> plot lines. Um, and they've all got some sort of a little mystery plot that they're trying to investigate in this one because the, the Relic crew are a group of, um, Relic hunters, but they hunt down dinosaur bones to return to um, the places where they originally came from and occasionally they end up finding um, more shifters who have awakened and all I can say in this one is if you've ever wanted to see dragon uh, not dragon um, dinosaur shifters in drag there is a drag (laughs) show scene towards the end of this book and it's great (laughs) hey Ashley hey Ashley hey Ashley I've never heard of this, but that sounds so much fun. <laughs> um, first book is the first book is Smash and Grab. Um, yeah, I just save and that. They're, they're, all great. <laughs> they're so short and yeah. they're so quick; like they are just bonkers. I love them. Never knew I needed um, dinosaurs. Your first. <laughs> Apparently, just hang around with me, and you'll find them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, mine is QQ Sweeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is uh, like a, a trilogy prequel to Queen's Quality. Um, but this guy is a um, he's a cleaner. So basically, he helps um, clean up people's like brain, like minds. So if someone's having like a lot of negative thoughts, he like helps go into their heads and like helps clean it up so it's very interesting uh so uh it's a it's a it's an interesting look at mental illness I guess because there is some talk about it and um it's not offensive it's just weird (laughs) (laughs) but uh the the girl character kind of stumbles by accident into his life because uh he catches her sleeping at school because she doesn't have anywhere to live so he helps her, uh, he and the principal of the school help her like find a a house to live in and a job while she finishes up school. And so she ends up helping him be a sweeper and go through mines. <laughs> so my cue had to be The Quarry Master by Amanda Milo. I am deeply obsessed with this book. It is kind of a long book, but I loved every second of it. And I wish it was really long. It does. It was, I wish it was longer, but it does say book number seven. You could read this as a standalone. Um, It also, I think on Amazon, it says it's book one of like the grumpy heroes or something, but you can, you can read it by itself. But, oh my gosh, if you like a grumpy hero with a heart, but who also like, and also a reluctant hero you will love this hero because he is like a dragon type alien and he has a tail and he like his tail will wag 
<laughs> when he's happy, but he doesn't want to show that he's happy. So he like stomps on it. And <laughs> anytime he's around the heroine, um, the heroine also has a disability. I believe her arm was amputated, but it's, it's also a rom-com. Amanda Milo is what writes some of the most hilarious books, but she also like throws in some emotional parts. I don't think there's a lot of emotional parts in this one, but it is just so glorious. And I highly recommend the audiobook because Nick Cracknell narrates Amanda Milo's books and he does such a good job doing a grumpy, growly hero like this. And it's it takes place on another planet. Yes, Victoria, I love that you love it. It's so good. <laughs> I need to read more Amanda Milo. Because I've read yes. some of them and they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> Her sense of humor is amazing. Yes. Her aliens are so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My cue is The Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Kat Sebastian, which is a MM romance with a disabled hero. So our, um, one of our heroes is in chronic pain. Um, I... I'm trying to remember if he was like shot in the leg or stabbed in the leg. I can't remember, but he deals with um, a lot of chronic pain. And so he um, is a retired highwayman. Sorry if you can hear my cat's toys. And <laughs> this other guy shows up in his bar and he is this like very clean nobleman. And this nobleman wants to hire him to be a hitman to kill his father. And our other hero says, no, I, I'm not a highwayman anymore, but I will teach you how to do things. And it is their opposites attract, attract grumpy sunshine romance. And it's really, really cute. There is a spinoff of this as well with a um, bi hero and our heroine who was um, his stepmother. And him and his stepmother are like the same age because historical romances and gross marriages. So... <laughs> But it's really cute. It's really funny. These two are um, very, very opposite. Yes, hitman. Very. <laughs> he's a highwayman, a hitman, whatever you want to call him. Yes. But he's retired. He doesn't do it anymore. He's given up that life. <laughs> nice. I keep meaning to read that one. It's I. Cat All Sebastian's right. books are always super like cute and funny. So. Yeah. All right, so for R, I have uh, Reverie and Redemption, if I can, I can bring it up. I need to read this. This is by Cadence Snow. Um, so this one is a Why Choose Paranormal Romance, and it is about a woman who, ever since she had, was a child, people have disappeared. Oh, sorry, not disappeared. People around her have fallen into these coma-like sleeps. And so she's kind of been ostracised a little bit in the town where she lives because people think it's strange that all of these people that she gets close to end up basically hospitalised. And when we start the book, she starts hearing these three voices in her head and it turns out that these are, um, what do they call them, dream walkers who have decided that they're going to help her find out and stop whatever force is causing people to fall asleep and not wake up around her and it was like this was an author that was brand new to me and I'd never heard anything about them and I really loved it um my r is super basic uh it's red white and royal blue if you haven't read it you should um it is it is one of my favorite books it's like my comfort read book I read it so much when I was uh, living abroad because I missed uh, home and it's about a guy who used to live in Texas so I would hear a lot of stuff about Texas because the thing about Texans is that you will always know that they are from Texas because they'll tell you um so yeah everyone I don't know everyone should know what red white and royal blue is because it's been <laughs> everywhere um but yeah give it a read it's funny it has some great like quotable moments um, so I have some of the quotes just in my head the same way I have Mean Girls quotes in my head. So highly recommend if you want a, a, a laugh and you like having some light politics in your uh, romances. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. 
Um, had so, so much trouble with R because I have so many favorite books that start with R, like Real, Restore Me, like all that. But I decided to go with one that I feel like is very underrated, and that's The Roommate Risk by Talia Hibbert. I love this book so much, and it took me by surprise because I, I Talia Hibbert's an author whose backlist I'm just working my way through. And when I came to this one, I was like, I've never heard anyone talk about this book, and I love it so much. So obviously, the hero and the heroine um, become roommates, but I love this because you have a virgin hero and the heroine who doesn't believe in love, and he has been pining after her ever since she, unbeknownst to her, took his virginity. <laughs> um, but he's been pining after her forever, but he also knows that she doesn't believe in love and she's perfectly fine on her own and everything. So he tries his best to kind of like stay away, but obviously it's very hard and he eventually wears her down, but it's, it's a really, really good one. And Talia Hibbert has a lot of really great books, but this one is one of my favorites. Yeah, I had a reason putting right. a bunch of Talia Hibbert. <laughs> <laughs> I know I could have easily filled up quite a few of these yeah. with her book. For R, I went with Red Dirt Heart by N.R. Walker, partly because it's Steps Channel. So I had to go with an Australian <laughs> <laughs> romance. I just this don't is... need to read this series. <laughs> it's actually really good. It's really short. It is following this guy who is a ranch. It's not called a ranch in Australia. It's called something else. It's at the beginning of the book and I'm going to mess it up. So my deepest apologies, but he owns this massive ranch in the outback. And this guy from Texas is just finishing up his degree in horticulture, I believe. And he decides to go there to learn how they farm in the outback because it's not the same land as in Texas. And so he goes there and the guy that owns the ranch is pretty much has sworn off love because the ranch is well, supposed to be like men's men, you know? And so, mm -hmm. but he's a gay man. And so he has pretty much sworn off love entirely. And then this guy shows up at his ranch and the two of them fall in love in the outback. And it is, it's really fascinating to watch the whole branching thing because N.R. Walker is Australian. And so she actually knows what she's talking about. And the whole thing is, is very well done. And it is a series, but each book is a standalone. So you don't need... If you don't want to continue on, this has an AGA in it. So. She does. She does write um, the Australian landscape really well in the in the ones that I've read that are set in Australia. She does a really good job. All right. Uh, um, so for S, um, I had Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which. Um, I really enjoyed, and I know there's some mixed feelings about it, but I kind of like the second chance romance mm -hmm. in it. And I also like that they were both authors, and they, um, so both protagonists are um, authors, they write in different genres, and they sort of reconnect. They had a, like a, a one-week fling in the past, and then suddenly in the present day, um, they reconnect at a literary event. Um, and... Yeah, it, it, it was, I really enjoyed it and I liked um, that she was a single mum and I like, I'm pretty sure it was her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I really liked that element of it as well. Has chronic, so, chronic illness rep in it too. It's really good. That, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I would really um, liked that one. For my... Yes, I have Killing Sarai by J.A. Redmersky. Um, Just read that. I was like, I feel like someone has talked about it recently, but it's, <laughs> okay, I figured it was you. That's why I was like, I think, I feel like Steph has said something about this. But uh, yeah, it's the first book in the uh, in the Company of Killers series. Uh, it has an assassin or hitman as like the main guy and it's a it really dark like it starts with um the the girl sarai escaping in the hitman's car because she was like sold to the cartel so um just be wary of that sort of content and it. it's it's really dark and really violent but uh uh it it reads almost like 
uh, like an action movie in the first half and then the romance kind of kicks in more towards the second half. I like that cover. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. The second I one- I read the... it because of Megan. Yay. <laughs> yeah, the first and second one um, are both about the same couple. And then after that, it branches off to like other people that they know. So I had to choose Spiked Hot Chocolate by Rosie Adams for <laughs> my app. Is that what you did? Rob, Rob you can both have... talk about it. Oh, <laughs> right. Do you not have another one? I, I have no, I do. Too. I have a backup. Okay. I have a backup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite holiday romance. It is perfection, if you ask me. I feel like it is the perfect amount of steam versus sweet. And it, it's short and it doesn't feel too short, but also it could have been thousands of pages long and I would have been happy because I just love this character, this couple so much. The hero is a single dad and the heroine has just broken up with her boyfriend. Yeah, she, he, she thought her boyfriend was going to propose to her, but he ended up breaking up with her instead. And she's kind of like doesn't really care like he does he did it on thanksgiving and she's kind of just like yeah whatever i'm just gonna spend the holidays by myself and he, the hero um was originally going to spend the holidays with his daughter but something happens and he ends up spending it by himself and then they have this really great meet cute but you guys like seriously everyone needs to read this book it's so good very low angst so freaking sweet i loved this book so much this one oh my gosh yeah. breathe I it Brie, you have to read this. is the you best have. holiday romance. He like is so in love with his daughter that he like puts up all pink decorations on his house just to make her happy. Yes. I was dying. It's so I cute. know. Oh. So sweet. All right. Their first kiss. My backup, their first kiss is so good. <laughs> in front of the tree, I died. Yes. My backup is See Me to Sleep by Arm Virtues, which is that was my backup too. <laughs> <laughs> same people down here yeah. <laughs> this is a monster romance with a paralysis demon if i remember it correctly mm -hmm. sleep paralysis demon and whatever so she had some very intense things happen um right at the beginning and so she has sleep problems and she keeps waking up in this dream with a sleep sleep paralysis demon on her and um it is their steamy romance that turns, I think there's more books going to come in the series because you do learn about the world at the end quite a bit. And I'm very mm -hmm. excited to get to know more because you just get a little glimpse of it at the end, but this is ridiculously steamy. If you, I wouldn't recommend starting here if you don't already no. read monster romances, <laughs> but if you are a monster romance reader and you haven't tried this one, it's really, really good. It is dark and there is some triggering stuff. So just know that going in, but it's all handled really well. Yeah. And RM is good about putting those triggers in the beginning of the book. So, yes, but also there are, like, there's ones. the, the, <laughs> the appendages are on point. So many appendages. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why and you very, don't want to start here. <laughs> yes. You don't want to start here. It might be a little much if you're starting, but. If you yeah, are, they are not humanoid, humanoid in any way. So. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay. So for tea, I had the takeover by T.L. Swan, which I have a complicated relationship with T.L. Swan. Some books I like, some, some I don't. And I enjoyed this one just because I like a romance where the heroine is older than the hero. And where she and Claire in this one is dealing with raising her kids after her husband passes away. And while I don't always agree with the way that she was, some of the things that she was, the way that she was raising her kids, I'm not going to comment because I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to say that. I sometimes I'm like, mm. <laughs> very free range children in this book but because they are free range children they end up in all sorts of mischief and Tristan has to figure out how to get them on side but what I really liked was his relationship I think it might have been the oldest son um, mm -hmm. and how he connects with him in this book uh, but yes 
also like when I read it I had no idea Taylor Swan was an Australian author and I'm like oh okay I can add that to my oh, list no, I didn't know that I didn't either mm -hmm. yeah yeah she's based in Sydney um so my next one is a uh, 10 blind dates by Ashley Elston I think you might have to do the number 10 oh well, yep there it is uh this is a YA but it is um a book that I read every year between like Christmas and um, New Year's because it falls in like those 12 days around Christmas time and uh, basically this girl breaks up with her boyfriend and is like heartbroken about it and she spends like two weeks with her grandparents over the Christmas holiday um, and they decide to cheer her up by her whole family taking like bets and then setting her up on 10 different blind dates um, throughout the course of like the two weeks. And it's just really funny. And so if you, uh, if you like light, funny um, holiday YAs and you're like, man, I just need like, I just need a, I just need a chill YA book. Then I'd say this one. Um, that's that's really all I have to say. I just I read this book like every year, so I've read it at least three or four times. So, <laughs> that's oh. awesome. <clears throat> so my tea book is Two Wrongs Make a Right" by Chloe Lees. Um, we read this for our Chronically Courageous Book Club because the heroine is autistic and the hero has anxiety. This is a much ado about nothing reimagining, and you have uh, its opposites attract, and then it also is fake dating. And they have a really funny meet cute in the beginning. Um, it kind of has like the, the Mr. Darcy effect because of his anxiety. He comes off a little bit cold to the heroine and she kind of mis misreads that and thinks that he's like, you know, mean or whatever. Um, but there is a caretaking scene in this that just like my heart, because as someone who um, <laughs> as someone who has a very restrictive diet, he does something for her, for her, because she she doesn't have a restrictive diet, but she does have like texture issues with food. And she like has a hard time finding food that she can eat because of the texture issues. And he like fills his entire freezer up with food that she can eat. And I just, <laughs> it's so sweet. But I love Chloe Lisa. I had to put at least one book by her on this list. Good pick. I'm about to make Ashley very happy because mine is that time I got drunk and saved a deal. <laughs> I can really love it. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the funniest fantasy romances that I've ever read. I'm obsessed with this series. I've read, I binged every single book in the series, including the novella that she released at Halloween. I just, I love this <laughs> world. It's kind of like medieval esque inspired. And mm -hmm. this book just, it, she leans into the kind of like humor part. So our heroine is a cinnamon farmer and her name is Cinnamon. <laughs> And she and she doesn't want anything to do with like saving the world, but she accidentally rescues this demon and then he makes her go on this adventure to try and take out the god that they think has been like saving them and protecting them. And she goes along with him and it is just the crazy antics that happen on their adventure while they fall in love. He is also a dragon, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> and so he can become a big fairy dragon and it's very adorable and I love it and the sequel is just as cute so <laughs> that's cute. such fun books I love this series I love them a lot <laughs> the um, way I almost chose that one but then I was like no I need a Chloe Lee on this <laughs> <laughs> I think this is where we're all filling in gaps here it's great um mm -hmm. my turn to do a Talia Hibbert book yeah I was really. gonna say I was like yeah. the only one left <laughs> Um, so Untouchable by Talia Hibbert, which is the second book in the Ravenswood series. Um, so contemporary romance between a single dad um, and the nanny that he hires. And I loved this one because you have bisexual rep. There was also um, discussions around depression. There was dyslexia rep as well, um, which I really um, was glad to see. And um, just content and trigger warnings for death of spouse and, and sick parents in this one. But this entire series is yes. fantastic. It's such it. a good series. 
Mm -hmm. I love the whole thing. So I would put all of them on here, except I tried to be good and limit myself to one <laughs> book per author. <laughs> she just says so good with like rep as far as like yeah. race, sexuality, like um, yeah. chronic illness, she disability. Like there's all sorts. Of, that entire series has so many great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a great, great series. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't do a list without doing a pucked book. So I picked Pucked Under by Helena <laughs> Hunting uh, because Randy Balls is my favorite <laughs> hero in the whole series. Um, and it fit with my you. So uh, Puck series is great. Um, Randy Ballistic is like my favorite of the guys. So that's all I have. <laughs> I just needed <laughs> to mention Puck. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> Lance is my favorite. Yes. Um. So my you is ridiculous, <laughs> but I had to put it on here. It is under her bed by Mina Shea. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like a super super short story, but it's mounted by a monster under her bed. It's a series, and it's all mounted by a monster, and then it's all anyway. So this is literally a romance between the heroine and the monster under her bed that she has known for her entire life, basically. But he is a monster. He is not humanoid whatsoever. In fact, I picture him in my mind like, I don't know if you guys remember the super old school McDonald's commercials with the monsters. He, in my head, he looks like a nugget looking monster that's just hairy. Like, that's it. But listen, it's so cute. <laughs> because he like overhears her talking about someone like bullying her or something and he she has to keep trying to stop him from going out and killing people for her <laughs> but the only way she can stop him is <laughs> but yeah it's it's you ridiculous and I, erotica. I can't because you said that and now I'm just picturing the the purple monster from McDonald's yeah <laughs> you're welcome that's right? what I picture whatever first. his name is I now just picture him uh-huh Yep. This might be a live reading at some point. I'm, I'm down. I'm always down for a live reading. Uh, it's ridiculous. Honestly, another, this whole, like, a, it's a box set. So ahead. all of the books are ridiculous. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. That's awesome. Now I need to know what the other ones are. <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, mine is another obvious one. Uh, it's Unhinged by Anley James because I can't go without a Necessary Evils book. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first book in her Necessary Evil series, which is a family of adopted brothers who are all serial killers and they each get their romance and they are all absolutely wild and ridiculous. They're also super possessive heroes that um, murder in order to show their love and affection. As one does. But they do all... <laughs> They always kill bad men. So it, it is very gratifying to read them take out just like the worst people ever. <laughs> Only a month until the last book. My gosh. Only a month. Only a month. To go. <laughs> Only a month. Um, okay. Uh, so for V, I had love at. God. I don't know why I'm typing and not looking at the screen. This is not helping me. Love and Other Wild <laughs> Things by Molly Harper, which is part of the Mystic Bayou series, which started out as an Audible original paranormal romance um, series. You can also get ebooks now for most of the books, if not all of them. I haven't checked if the last couple are out in ebooks. Anyway, these are super cozy paranormal romance stories. If you haven't read them, um, they're set in a set in a little town. Um, called Mystic Bayou and there's all sorts of magical um, beings that live in this town and some humans have been let in to study sort of the magical magic phenomenon in this town and how the town structure has been set up to cope with that and this is the romance between the town's bear shifter mayor um, and a witch and the mayor is just this total cinnamon roll over the top, larger than life character who just loves everyone and just treats everyone like family. It is adorable. I think I made you read the first one for one of your vlogs. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And I then I went and read one. all of them. Yep. And then They're I pretty much so read good. all of them for Love in the Night. <laughs> so good. But yes. Cuddly psychopaths. It's not something that you would have thought you would ever have said, but <laughs> that is the Necessary Evil series. All right. Yeah. Um, so I think this is my only one that's like an actual stretch. No, it's not. I have two. I lied. But uh, I have Devil's Line. It's under upside down. Devil's Line. Um, for my V. <laughs> and uh, if you if you see the anime for this on Hulu, don't watch it because it sucks. Uh, they cut <laughs> like they cut the whole romance out basically of the anime. So they just they just made it dark. But also you can't have the main character without the romance because the reason that this guy is involved at all is because the main female character likes him and is like trying to have a relationship with him. <laughs> so cutting the romance just doesn't, it now it just doesn't make sense. This is me going off about an anime that no one has seen. Don't watch it, read the book instead. The The series is so much better. And um, I think the first seven books of it are on KU if you have Kindle Unlimited, so. But it's really cute. It's about this guy. He's a vampire. Um, he's a half vampire, but they call them demons or devils. Um, and uh, he, if a if a devil sees blood or is turned on, he like he needs to taste it basically. So this guy is trying really really hard to not fall for the girl, even though he really really likes her because he doesn't want to hurt her. And. So it's them trying to maneuver a relationship with each other uh, safely. And it's it's very it's very cute because he's like, I'm a tough guy. And then he ends up like falling asleep at her house, like under her um, like little heated blanket. And it's so cute. <laughs> so my V is Loving Mr. Daniels by Brittany C. Cherry. Um, this is a teacher student romance between um he's a high school teacher but the age gap again in this one isn't quite as bad because he um he's very young i think he's in his early 20s or something and she had to stay back a year because of an illness and so she's 18 but and also like the power dynamic doesn't bother me in this one because they meet before he is her teacher and they don't realize that he's going to be her teacher. So forbidden romance. And of course it's Brittany C. Cherry. So it's most emotional, but I love this one. For mine for V, what did I have? I have the very secret society of irregular witches by Sangu Mandana, which is, it leans more contemporary, but there is a romance in this one. It is a really, really cozy and sweet found family um, between our heroine, who is a witch, and she's kind of had to spend her whole life alone. And she gets asked to move to this little house to teach these three young witches how to control their magic. And she has a grumpy sunshine romance with the librarian who desperately wants to protect the little girls from being hurt by anyone. And so he he loves the three little girls and he doesn't trust our heroine. And so they have a grumpy sunshine romance and it's this whole quirky cast of people. And it's it's very cute and very sweet. It has romantic love and platonic love and familial love. And it's it's beautiful. I love it. I have that to read on my TBL. It's so cute. You can't read it and not smile like it just makes you smile. Mm All right, so for W, I had Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which I was kind of really pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this one because I get a little bit nervous by the um, traditionally published um, contemporary romances, but I really like this one. So it is the romance between a TV meteorologist and a sports reporter, and they decide to work together because their bosses were in a relationship which is on the rocks um, at the time. And so they team up to try and get them back together and then they end up falling in love. And I'm pretty sure this one had Jewish rep in it as well. Mm -hmm. And it was just really beautifully written. I think there was also, from memory, maybe some anxiety 
that, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I think, or depression. Did you say depression? Oh, depression. No, it was depression. Yeah. Yes, and he's a chubby hero. I love that. He so is a chubby too. hero. And he's just, he's beautiful. Love him. Mm -hmm. I've never read it, but you just said chubby hero, and now I want to. <laughs> those are like, those are the magic it's words. It's worth it. It is. Um, oh, I'm next, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I have the Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare because I love Tessa Dare. She is my favorite uh, historical romance author. Um, and this one's great because uh, this girl collects animals because she wants to take care of them and make sure that like they're okay. So she has like cats and dogs and birds and goats. And um, mm -hmm. the, the guy is like trying to sell the property next door, uh, but he can't because no one wants to live next to the, the crazy farm lady. So um, he's like trying to help her house all of her pets so that uh, he can help sell his land, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. So we have a um, popular hero and a, a nerdy kind of like wallflower heroine. It's great. So if you like animals in your romances, this one's great. There's so many animals. Mm -hmm. there are a lot of animals. so mine I had to throw in another Talia Hibbert <laughs> it's work for it by Talia Hibbert I love this book so much it's a male male romance it's opposites attract it says it's just for him book four but you can read this as a standalone um so you have like a outcast loner hero and then the the other the love interest he's much more um kind of like irreverent and like just complete opposite of them. And then it's also workplace. They end up having to work together and force togetherness and stuff, but it's, it's so good. It's so good. And they have a really good meet cute too. And almost a little bit, not enemies to lovers, but they don't have a very good um, first meeting. Like <laughs> they get a little, they, it's not very, um, they don't get along right away when they first meet. And then mine is the What He Doesn't Know series by Candy Steiner, which is the last love triangle on this. And this is my all-time favorite love triangle. Um, mm -hmm. There is cheating in this one, so just an FYI for anyone. But our heroine and her husband are on the rocks. Their marriage is falling apart around them. And her first love returns to her small town um, just during this time period. And the two of them rekindle their romance. And our heroine is stuck between this guy that she fell in love with all these years ago, that was her first real love that didn't end up working out. And the love that she used to have with her husband that has seemingly disappeared. And it is a love triangle between the three of them. And it is beautifully done. This does have um, trigger warnings for miscarriage as well in it, but it is, it is a very good love triangle that you don't know the answer to until right at the very, very end. So this one's very good. And the guy that, and the guy that doesn't get his like chosen at the end gets his own happily ever after in book three. So everyone oh, gets that's their not, happily ever. That's not great. me only reading the first book in this duet, so I never actually find out who she ends up with <laughs> because we don't find out to the end of book two. How can you not? <laughs> I finished know. these back to back. Like I was like, I cannot, I cannot <laughs> wait for <laughs> one moment. I, really until... need, I need to start making posts about when I DNF books. Because what it literally is, is I put it down and it ceased to exist in my brain. <laughs> so it's just that's like, bad. that's why I have like 30 books on my currently reading because they're books that I'm like, yeah, I'll finish it. And then I just, I just don't. It's been two years and they're still on my <laughs> currently reading. All right. Um, for, oh, gosh. typing. For X, I had Exasperating, which is uh, book three in the Elite Protection series by Omri James. Um, not me trying to find an Omri James book that I haven't already put in one of these videos at all. <laughs> uh, so this is another MM Romantic Suspense. This one is an age gap bodyguard romance um, between a celebrity and the private security agent who is hired to protect him. And this series is also a little bit 
bonkers and off the wall and also has loose ties to the Necessary Evils series. You don't have to have read um, one or the other to read the other series, but if you read them both, there are nice little tie-ins. Um, my ex is uh, because of both Heather and Morgan, and it is Technical by Alexandria House. Um, and it was my very first book that I read in 2022, which is good because <laughs> that means that Elft was in fact not the first book I read, or sorry, 2023, because it means that Elft was not the first book I read in 2023. I wish, I wish Elft was the first. I literally finished this book that morning of the live show. <laughs> You're so lucky. <laughs> But um, <laughs> Technical by Alexandria House is a, a basketball romance. So I think I've hit the trifecta. I hit uh, football, hockey, and basketball. You're welcome. There you go. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. What is that? So, I don't know. There it is. <laughs> there it is. But yeah, so it's uh, very, very low angst, which is one of the things that appealed to me. Um, I, needed, I needed like a, a, real, a real light book. And this one, while it is very spicy, there is not a lot of drama, which makes me very happy. And it's literally just like um, the the basketball player is just like a worshiping hero, which makes me love, love, love this book, which is the, like one of the main reasons I read it is because I was like, oh, no one's talking about like angst or drama in this. It's just a, a basketball, like a guy like just wanting and worshiping a girl. Yes, sign me up. Let's do it. So um <laughs> Yeah, everyone should read it. You don't need to read the first one because I didn't read the first one and I was not lost at all. Um, Good. And yeah, so people recommended it to me and now I am recommending it to everybody else. Everyone needs to read <laughs> Technical because it's great. It's a, uh, I think the the, the meet cute is um, the, the girl is basically like an Uber Eats driver. She goes to his house to drop off his food and then her water breaks and his like, Oh yeah. Uh, on his front step, and so That's he has great. to uh, help deliver her baby, and that is their meet cute, and it's great. <laughs> I love that. So hopefully, I'm not stealing this from Robin. <laughs> I genuinely thought everyone was going to choose this one, um, but I chose Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I almost um, chose it. I almost did. I, no, Perfectly I was like, did. everyone's going to buy it. <laughs> I've used it before, so I couldn't use it. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this one is a great contemporary marriage of convenience. It's also friends to lovers. I love how they like end up becoming friends first and then fall in love. You have a bi hero and it's a Scottish big boy hero. I think he's a big boy hero in this one. It's been a while since I've read it. But the best part is there is pegging in this. So it's great. It's my favorite. It's my, I the first I didn't love the first book in the series, the I forget what it's called, but I loved this one. And the cover is beautiful. Yeah. It's such a stunning cover. Mm -hmm. I just tweaked X and used it to give an Alexis Hall recommendation. Yes. <laughs> so I just went, Sounds good. A lady, I went for a lady for a duke just because I want to recommend this all book all the time. It is one of my favorite. It might actually be it's my so favorite good. historical romance of all time. It is a it's chunky my... book, but it is worth it. Just so worth all... 450 pages um mm -hmm. you have a trans heroine and a disabled hero and they were best friends growing up and our heroine fakes her death so that she can live her life and she learns that her best friend is really struggling and so she returns to him to try and help him through his grief and to the two of them reform a friendship and then fall in love and it is so beautiful and i love it so much <laughs> it has so many good discussions about that time period in general and alexis hall definitely hits on a lot of them um and it's still even though there's a lot of like hard-hitting things in here he still has a way to bring in humor into his books yes. every yeah. single time and it's so good Without i love this one like the humor is not inappropriate yes. at all. It like it makes sense, and then no. he always has great social commentary. He's just he's yeah, like, yeah. No, there it's great. So I've also things. read this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. that like don't get disgusted about this time period that he was mm -hmm. able to touch on in this. So it's fantastic. I just needed a way to sneak this one in. Yes. There. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
if, if someone pushed me to have to pick an absolute favourite of last year, this would have been the one. Mm. Yeah. That's so so good. good. Such a good book. Mm. All right. Two more to go. Um, for why, uh, I'm going to pull this one up. I have a, uh, there you go. Um, this is an Australian um, sort of country slash rural romance. It is closed door, but I wanted to put um, one of these on here um, for people who like sort of small country town romances. And that's what Carly Lane writes. And she, um, a bit like N.R. Walker, she does a really good job of really writing Australia as a place. Um, so this is about a woman who has returned home to help out on her family's farm after her parents are in a car accident and her brother passes away um, from cancer. And sort of that's all set up in the first part, in the first chapter. And she sort of had this high-flying job overseas, but she's come home and she's stuck around and she's finding that she actually really likes working on the farm and she starts planning to maintain it and expand it in the future and her parents are kind of worried that they've stopped her from pursuing her dreams but she's really sort of come around and gone no actually this is something that I want to I want to follow up and it's her relationship with a former soldier who ends up staying at these sort of B&B little cottages on the property and he's dealing with um, sort of his own demons from being in the military and from losing friends and all of that sort of stuff. And they just sort of connect as he helps out around the property and they both begin to realise sort of their, their new dreams that um, what they had in the past, does it, it's not that it's not valid anymore, it's just that they've moved on and they've got new dreams and I really like it. So I wanted to include it on here. Hmm. Um, on a completely different note, I have Cutie and the Beast by Yuhi Azumi. Um, I am anxiously awaiting for like the next book in the series because it takes forever for these to come out. But there's three out so far, um, unless I missed a release and then there's four, but I'm pretty sure there's only three. Um, but it's basically a pro wrestler and a girl who's a huge fan of him. And um, he's the he's the heel. So he's always the bad guy in like the like WWE of Japan, basically. So he's always the bad guy. And um, so the only people who like him typically are like dude bros who are like, yeah, man. And like none of the girls end up liking him because he's always like he's never the hero, basically, in the skits slash wrestling matches. And um, the girl loves him so much. So like she'll tweet him, like tweet at him, like all fans do. And it was just like, you were so great, or like, don't let them get you down as if it was like, real, sorry, wrestling's not real. Um, and she's like, you're so awesome. Keep up the good work. You make your fans so happy. And so he like, he doesn't see her face because the profile pictures of like a, a stuffed toy. And so he's like, Oh, I love this like fan. This fan always makes my day. And um then she like goes to meet him and he realizes that it's a cute girl and then he realizes that this cute girl is like 10 years younger than him and it's just like so many emotions at once fly at him and it's it's so cute it's adorable so i highly recommend cutie and the beast it is it is an adorable manga <laughs> it's a great name too great title mm -hmm. it is <laughs> So mine is the book that I read recently. It is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I'm not going to try and pronounce the author's last name, but this book was very emotional. It's dealing with a lot of grief, um, but this one has one of my favorite tropes that I feel like I can never find, which is a bait and switch hero. Like you think the hero is going to be one person and someone else. Um, it, the, the heroine is an artist and the... Um, she ends up getting invited to display her art um, by the guy that she's dating. And she ends up like flying like on a private jet flying over there. But then the romance ends up being between her and the guy she's dating's dad, <laughs> which you don't necessarily expect right away. But it's really, really good. There's an age gap in it. He is a chef 
and he's kind of like he's a reclusive chef but he was also a celebrity chef so she knows who he is but yeah it's it's so good it is so good there's it's so swoony and also very atmospheric because of where it takes place Mine is another not shocker, and that's You and Me by Tal Bauer. Um, I recommend this book, I think, in every single video live show that I do. Um, <laughs> it is, it was, yeah, it was one of my favorite books of last year. It is an MM single dad's romance, and it is these two fathers who have very different relationships with their sons. One guy has a strained relationship, and the other one is best friends with his son. And they were both previously married and um, their sons are about to graduate high school. And it is them coming together and kind of figuring out the next steps in their own life away from just being dads. And then their kids have some stuff going on in their lives. And it is it is a very sweet romance. The, the conflict in this one is far more external conflict than the romantic conflict. And so you don't really have a third act breakup or anything in here. The conflict is all with their children. And so it has a great, a great look at both romantic love as well as parental love. And I just really liked it. There's a cute found family at the end that brings them all together. It's, it's very sweet. And I love this one a lot. Such a good book. It's such a good one. And his new book just came out. <laughs> yeah. Was that gravity? The or rest of the story. Oh, the rest of the, the story. Rest of it, yeah, it just came out. Yeah. No, I read gravity and love that one too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What's your last one? So my last book um, and continuing our men at work series, I went with her Halloween treat by Disney <laughs> Rice. <laughs> so um, this is the first book in the series this is the Halloween one and this um, is set during Halloween and it's about a woman who returns home for her brother's Halloween themed wedding which is awesome and she ends up sort of falling for her brother's best friend who she meets when she goes to stay at, at one of their properties and it's awesome mm -hmm. It's a good one. It is. I am. Uh, I am glad that we both picked <laughs> one from that series. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my last one. I'm very happy with my last one. Is uh, check please. Oh um, yeah. It's so I good. cannot pronounce the author's la last name. I'm not going to try. But uh, there's there's a Z in both her first and her <laughs> last name. Um, so I feel like that counts. Uh, <laughs> But I love it so much. It is about a uh, a male figure skater slash baking blogger slash blogger. Uh, and he gets a scholarship to um, play hockey at this school. So he goes and plays hockey at the school, even though he is a figure skater. And uh, he hates getting checked. He's terrified of it, which is like them like hitting you. Uh, and he, he's like, ah! And... So he, uh, the captain, cough, 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 uh, helps him get over getting his fear of getting checked so that he can play hockey better. And it is a, it is a great, adorable MM romance. There's two, two giant volumes or four small volumes, but uh, highly recommend this graphic novel. It is sweet, sweet and wholesome. And there's a lot of like LGBT rep in it and like acceptance which makes me very very happy i love it and that was one of the very few graphic novels that i've read and i really liked it um so i also picked a tiffany how do you say your last name rice let's see i, I say rice but it's probably rice okay. um I, I chose the headmaster I love this yes. book a lot. I read this a long time ago. It's only 125 pages. I don't want to say too much about it because there is a pretty, it's pretty twisty and great. It's very, very, very atmospheric and a little bit paranormally, but it's a romance between the heroine who kind of stumbles upon um, this school and then the head headmaster of the school. So she doesn't go to the school. So it's nothing like that, but she's an adult. So it's really, really good. 
Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It is way past my bedtime, Morgan. <laughs> it's very atmospheric. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then mine is Mile High by Liz Tomford, which is one of the books that I've read most recently. And it is a hockey romance between a playboy hockey player who has this like tough guy image and the new flight attendant on their chartered plane. And our heroine is kind of feisty and she is the first person that kind of like tries to put him in his place. And he becomes completely and utterly obsessed with her. And it is their romance. And he is this like bad boy with a total heart of gold. And it is, it's fantastic. It's long, but it is absolutely worth it. It's very steamy and very swoony. And the way that the hero worships the ground that the heroine walks on did me in. I loved it. So good. I am always down for new hockey romances. Oh, I'm always and down the sequel comes out really soon. I read this one because of Caitlin from The Love Librarian. She has been posting about this a lot. And I had to read it. <laughs> and it was worth it. Yeah. So good. I'm going to need to read that one. All right. We did it. We got through all of them. <laughs> Thank oh, you for you staying up past your bedtime. <laughs> yes. Morgan, are you talking about um, the headmaster not being able to find it? Because they changed the cover of it. So if you search it, you'll see it's mm -hmm. just a different cover. It looks like that. Oh, I didn't so know. if that's what you're talking about, I'll find it. But over a hundred racks is that? Was it really? <laughs> I I didn't math yeah. that. Yeah, twenty six sure. times four. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, Hopefully, gosh. you guys have a bunch of books to read. Hopefully, your TBR is giant yeah. for twenty twenty three. I applaud you all for staying for this starting place. Yeah, two hour and forty and minute monster. And yeah. thank you to Megan and Bree and Robin for agreeing to do this with me. I wanted to do one live because I thought it would be fun to get lots it was, of different it's a good idea. It was fun. I got I got mm -hmm. so many wrecks. I know. Well, I might too. do another one next school holidays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. I will um, make sure I go through probably, it'll probably be tomorrow that I pop the list of books up in the um, description but I will go through and, and make a list so yay yeah. thank you for joining us I hope thank that everyone you. has I'll a really good you. night yeah thank you guys love y'all and um we'll see bye. you guys next time bye yeah. <laughs>